much you care for me. It's <laughs> such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my you care for me in such a special way that's why I praise you I lift you and I magnify your name hey. that's why my heart turn it around that's why When I get up in the morning, I praise her. When I go to sleep at night, I praise her. When I'm driving in my car, I praise her. Oh. That's why my heart is filled with praise. When I don't feel my best, I still praise her. Yeah. When I'm going through trials and tribulations, I still praise her. Yeah. And I, I can't do nothing else but praise the Lord. Because it's been so good, so, 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 so good to me. Uh, it's been so, 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 so good to me. That's why I praise him. With every breath in my body, I praise him. I give him all the glory, all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. All the glory, all the glory. your hands up and give him glory. I bless your name, Jesus. Praise him in your heavenly language. I give you glory. I bless your name, Jesus. I give you all the glory. I bless your name, Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is the last time, Brother Gordon. That's why my heart is filled with everybody say that one, two, three. Hey. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Can we just lift our hands to Jesus all over this place and just bless the Lord? The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continuously be in my mouth are you excited tonight are you glad to be in the house of the lord tonight let's just worship the lord and give god some praise can can i get at least maybe 10 people that have stepped out in the aisle way and just begin to lift their hands up and walk the aisle way and bless the lord and just minister to the lord tonight the bible says in the old testament i know we are a new covenant church but in the old testament the bible said that the priests the ministers in the house of God would walk the floor and it says the ministers that stand by night in the house of the Lord. They looked at ministering to the Lord in worship and expectation. Amen. Let's just break up this cold atmosphere. I know it's, this has been wonderful worship. The place is, Sister Doty has, God has used her mightily. That worship was awesome. Amen. And let's, let's ride off that wave she created. Let's Let's get in here and begin to praise team. God used them beautifully. But let's just begin to worship God. Begin to talk about our expectation. Begin to pray right now. Lord, we want you to move in our midst. 
We want you to have your way. We want liberty. We want freedom in the spirit. We don't want any holes. We don't want anything binding, anything holding back. There are people here tonight. This may be their last night in service. They need a miracle. There, We don't know. There are people that are driven from out of town. Let's not be selfish. Let's ask God to stretch out his hand to heal, his hand to deliver. There are families that need healing. There's, there's, there's a move of God that God wants to give us. Whenever God's people come together in the house of the Lord, there is a purpose in involved there's a purpose with God's people God is never haphazard it's never just by chance it's always on purpose when we come together we are the body of Christ and it's going to be the way we say it's going to be the way we believe it's going to be the way we call it so just begin to stretch out your hands right now begin to acknowledge the Lord and said father we are the redeemed and we say so we agree with you have your way do what you want to do say Lord I will not hinder you I won't stand in your way Way. I won't be the hindrance tonight. Lord, I'm going to let you have your way. Whatever you want to do, breathe upon your people a fresh wind of your spirit, a fresh anointing. Do you know the Lord can anoint you and your ears will come open? Do you know the Lord can anoint you your eyes will come open? Do you not know the Lord can anoint you and your spirit will be sharpened and perceptible? God wants to calibrate you from the inside out. It's a time of great discernment upon the body of Christ. There's such great deception from the top bottom from the White House to the courthouse. It's so much lying and deception going on in this country and people are suffering and dying right now in this nation. We need to lift up America. We're under the threat of World War III. Right now, they're even threatening and talking about China. They're talking about places that may we even attacked in this country. We need to pray against terrorism. Pray against what the enemy is trying to do. We are the church of the living God. Jesus said, behold I give you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall in no wise hurt you. He said whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We, he said, pray my will be done. Pray that my will, my kingdom come. My will be done. You, we have to pray it. It's not just going to happen. His church upon the earth must call those things that be not as though they were and they will be in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to praise him and thank him for revival. Begin to thank him for the outpouring of his spirit. Begin to praise him for your loved ones coming to Christ. Your nieces and nephews, your brothers and sisters, your children, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, your parents. Your, in the name of Jesus, we believe in God for breakthrough. We come against the spirit of transgenderism and spiritual identity malfunction. We come against all these demonic spirits in this country trying to destroy. We come against these spirits of sex trafficking and destroying and exploiting our children. We come against this evil dark in the land. We come against it. We cast it down. You foul unclean devil. You foul unclean spirit. We speak to the principalities over this area. We serve you notice. We are the church of the living God and we rebuke you. We stand against every spirit of witchcraft. Every devil of control. Every demonic spirit of uncleanness. We rebuke you. We stand against you. We cast you down. We call you out. We identify you. You will not you will not, you will not hold back. We say to the south, give up. We say to the north, keep not back. In the name of Jesus for salvation, for an outpouring, for an outpouring in our schools, among our children, all across the land. Oh, oh hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. For an outpouring of your spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, how I wish it would rain. Yeah. Rain down your Holy Spirit. Rain. Hallelujah. We want you to rain down your spirit. A mighty move of God. We are hungry for a move of God. We are hungry for a move of your spirit. Lord, we don't even know what it looks like, but any way you want to do it, come any way you want to come, we'll offer you to blow our mind. Have your way, have your way, Lord. Bring down by your spirit. Bring down by your spirit, Lord. Come on, pray in the Spirit, somebody. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have your heavenly language. Out of the, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow 
rivers of living water. Whoa. Begin to worship the Lord in song. The song of the Lord will come forth. Randa mana na kete la na baso la na maki na re. Randa le kete le le pe kusha na re. Suranda makanda la le kete la la bakuria. Oh, chala mata kona na mati. Shita la la manga la la boko la la maria. Paul said, "I will pray with my understanding." He said, "I will pray in the spirit." I will pray in other tongues. I will pray with my understanding. How be it when I pray in the Spirit? Hallelujah. It's not the Holy Spirit, but my spirit prays. We get in the Spirit by getting in our heavenly language and begin to pray. Yeah, yeah. For our nation, Lord. For our families. For our children, Lord, so many are sick and afflicted. These diseases tend to linger. Lord, we want a revival of healing among your people, Lord. Bible days are here again. Oh, Lord, let the gifts of the Spirit flow out. We want to have an outpouring greater than Azusa. Hallelujah. Oh. Raise up real apostles and prophets, true men of God. Not the clowns that we see now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Not the fake and the phony, but Lord, have your way. Hey, have your way, Lord. Lord, if I'm in your way, remove me. I don't want to be in your way. I want you to do what you want to do. That's a bold statement to tell God. But I mean it. I want what God wants. I want God to have what he wants. I want God's way, not my way. Not your way, not my way, but Yahweh. Hallelujah. If Yahweh say yes, it don't matter who say no. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, go find two or three people. Get out your seats and greet somebody. Hug somebody. Agree with somebody, tonight is a night for blessing. Tonight is a night for deliverance. You've been waiting on a miracle for so long. Hallelujah. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Mr. Clean always sing this song. He said, you've been waiting on a blessing. You got three minutes to walk around and say hi. And it seems it just won't come. Doors are shut. <clears throat> Things are rough, and it seems nobody cares. I got news for you. The devil, he is a liar and a deceiver too. God is not the root. Blessing you, God is not through blessing you. If you know the song, sing it. God is not through blessing you. Do you believe it? So whatever, whatever He promised, our God is able. He's able to do God is not the root blessing you you've been waiting on deliverance and it seems it just won't come body sick pain everywhere and it just looks like you, like you are done. I got news for you. The devil, I said the devil, he is a liar and, and, and a deceiver too. Why? God, I wish I had some folk that believe it tonight. 
is not through my 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 god is not through blessing you some of y'all know this part you can turn to somebody and say so never so never never ever give up I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how bad it looks. Never give up on what he promised, what Jesus promised, what God promised to you. Yeah, God is not the root. My, 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 my God. He sits high and he looks low. He's got 10,000 blessings in his right hand and he's still got one for you. My, my God is not the root blessing you. You, point to somebody, tell them, you and you. Look at here. Have you tried Jesus? Right. Have you tried my Jesus? Right. Have you tried Jesus? Yeah. He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? You done tried everybody else. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? Yeah. He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's, right. He's a heavy load carrier. 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 Well, a doctor in the sick room. He's a doctor in the sick room. He's my doctor in the sick room. Make it personal. He's my doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's my lawyer in the courtroom. He's my lawyer in the courtroom. Yes, he is. He's all right. He's all right, yo. He's all right. He's all right, yo. You believe it? He's all right. He's all right, Lord. He's all right. He's all right, yo. He's all, right. He's, all right. He's 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 all right. Make me wanna dance. Right. Make me wanna shout. Right. Give me that joy. Right. Joy like a river. Right. Down in my soul. Right. When I'm down, right. he picks me up. 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 Did he pick you up? 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 He'll pick you up, up, up. He'll pick you up. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried my Jesus? Maybe you ain't tried. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. He's all right. I don't care what the world says about him. I found in him. I found in him. I found in him. I found in him. A resting place. A resting place. A resting place for my soul. For my mind. It don't matter what the world. I walk with him. I walk with him. I walk with him. I walk with Jesus. I walk with Jesus. I walk with Jesus. I walk with Jesus. No, I am with you. Always till the end. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Can I get a word of witness? Can I get a word of witness? Can I get a word of witness? Can I get one witness? Can I get a witness? Sanctified witness. Holy Ghost witness. He pick you up. Did he pick you up? Did he pick you up? Look where he brought you. He brought
brought you through. He's taking you to blaze the Lord. He's all right. He's all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. If you don't shout, if you don't dance, I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on singing. If you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. The walls will clap. The floor will shake. If you don't praise him, I wish somebody would help me praise him. Help me praise him. Clap those hands. Do your dance. Jump for joy. Jump for joy. Jump for Jump for joy. Joy, 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 joy. Joy like a river. Joy bells ringing in my soul. Joy bells ringing in my soul. 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 What's his name? 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 Jesus. Feel the chains breaking. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Call that name. Jesus. Say that name. Jesus. Spells broke. Jesus. Curses lift. Jesus. Chains break. Jesus. Say that name. 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 Jesus. Close your eyes. Jesus. Say that name. Jesus. A little bit louder now. Jesus. A little bit louder now, 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 a little bit louder now. Pick it up now, 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 pick it up now. Say that name, touch your neighbor, and say Jesus. Shut up. Hey! Somebody gonna get loose in a minute. Woo! He's alright. Hey. You ought to lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. This ain't Simon Says. You ought to praise him on your own. Don't wait for me to tell you what to do. Somebody said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Oh, 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 oh. The children of Israel, they were down in Egypt land. They were under the whip and chain of the enemies of God. They cried out day and night. They cried unto the Lord to deliver them from Egypt land. God came down in the desert in a burning bush. He called Moses and said, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. You tell Pharaoh that I said, let my people go. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. He rained down plague after plague. He shook Pharaoh. And then Pharaoh finally let his people go. He chased them to the Red Sea. Because he changed his mind. But it was far too late. Because Jehovah had made up his mind. They crossed across the Red Sea and got to the other side. 
and they saw Pharaoh's army go down in the Red Sea swallowed up inside they grabbed the tambourines they grabbed the horns and the harps and they began to rejoice they sing unto the Lord a new song hallelujah 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 praise the Lord hallelujah 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 praise the Lord for the Lord has done great things for the Lord he is great you ain't got to help me if you don't want to for the Lord has done great things for the Lord he is great you don't know nothing he turned my mourning into dancing he turned my tears into praise Big Red, get your dance party. He turned my morning into dancing. He turned my tears into praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. On that way, hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. For the Lord has a great thing, for the Lord, He is great. For the Lord has a great thing, for the Lord, He is great. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, he turned my morning into dancing. He turned my tears into praying. Come on. He turned my morning into dancing. He turned my tears into praise. He turned my morning into dancing. He turned my tears into praise. Come on. He turned my morning into dancing. He turned my tears into praise. One time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want to win the battle, here you do. Send Judah first. 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 Wait a minute. Judah means praise. Judah means praise. Come on, praise him. Judah means praise. Judah means praise. Come on. Judah means praise. Judah means praise. Judah means praise. When you're going to battle, send Judah first, first, first. Send Judah first. Send Judah first, first, first. Send Judah first. One more time. Send Judah first, first, first. Send Judah first. Come on, praise the Lord. Send Judah first. He turned my morning into dancing. He turned my tears into praise. He turned my morning into dancing. He turned my tears into praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to Dios. I said, Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and shout, Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. Give the Lord the praise for His mighty hand 
If the Lord brought you out, shout glory. If the Lord has made you glad. If the Lord has made a way. You ought to give him praise. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to bless the Lord. So where you get that song from? The Holy Ghost gave it to me. I didn't, I didn't know nobody's album. Shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. They, they rush on the city, run on the wall. Praise is the army that carries out his word. They rush on the city. They run on the wall. Praise is the army that carries out his word. The Lord utters his voice before his army. The Lord utters his voice before the army. Blow, blow, blow. Sound the alarm, the holy mountain. Blow the trumpet in fire. Sound the alarm. I know y'all only got one way. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Y'all can't go like that. I don't know. That's a different beat. That's something different. It is different. Uh, uh, uh. Huh. Uh, uh, uh. Hallelujah. Jump up and praise him. 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 Jump up and praise you, the Lord. Jump up and praise him. 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 I hope you go home with you. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, ah, oh, 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 Tell somebody, why did you jump up and praise him? <laughs> well, I can't walk. You know if you ever thought about it, if you just jumped up and praise him, you might start walking. <laughs> Y'all not really ready. I know. It's, it's too early for all that. I got a question. I heard it was a Holy Ghost filled service going on. I, I'm, I think I walked in the wrong room. Is the party over here? I'm trying to find out where the party is. Is the party over here? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is the party over there? They got the party. We rock the party. That's why the party's over here. Wait a minute. Is the party over here? If it's over, then where's the party? Hey, jump up and praise him. Jump up and praise him. This is where you, you got to bring your own wine here. You got to bring your own bottle to this party. You got to bring your own oil. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endure forever. Hallelujah. Take somebody by the hand and shake it. Give them a Pentecostal handshake. Shake it like you're getting ready to shake it loose. And tell somebody, I may not be everything that I ought to be. But I thank God I am not what I used to be. And because the Lord plucked me out and laid his hands on me I got the Holy Ghost I'm washing the blood and I am getting better all the time can I get a witness somebody shout glory touch three people to say all the time all the time all the time thanks be unto God one two one two three pray hey, all the time all the time, all the time, God is good. All the time, God is good. God is good. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you agree? God is good. 
all the time, all the time. Picking them up, putting down, 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 picking them up, putting them down, picking them up, putting them down, picking them up. It's Friday night. We came to party, a praise celebration. If you was out in the world, you wouldn't even be dressed yet. The party wouldn't even be started till 12 o'clock. Hey, yeah! But we ain't drinking alcohol. We drinking the new wine of the Holy Ghost. I dance without you. He by by she. I know what he brought me out of. I know what he does for me. He keeps on doing great things. Every time I turn around. Yeah. Look out here. One more time. Y'all go ahead and take a seat. Hey. identification this is not a Baptist church this ain't a Catholic church this ain't a Presbyterian church this is a hand clapping foot stumping owl running scripture quoting devil stumping oil slinging house anointing come on church of the living God this is a Pentecostal full gospel Holy Ghost yeah Don't stop believing. <laughs> oh, yes. I got the faith. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, I got the faith. Everything's gonna be all right. I got the faith. Everything's gonna be all right. Be all right. Be all right, be all right. Tell your neighbor, tell him. I got the faith, everything's gonna be all right. Oh, I got the faith, everything's gonna be all right. I got the faith, everything's gonna be all right. Be all right. You wanna know how I know? You wanna know how? Jesus, he done told me everything's gonna be all right. Oh, Jesus, he done told me everything's gonna be all right. Oh, Jesus, he done told me everything's gonna be all right. Be all right, be all right, be all right. Hallelujah. Jesus said, fear not. For I have overcome the world. You may be seated. Oh. To God be the glory. To God. Be the glory to God. Be the glory for all the things He's done. For all the things He's done. For all the things He's done. Stretch it out. For all the things He had. Y'all ready? To God be the glory. God be the glory. God be the glory for all the things He's done. For all the things He's done. 
done for all the things he's done for all the things he's done for all the things he's done for all the things stretch it out he's done for all the things he has done hey hey abobosha she got a boho sign hey <laughs> can't stop praising won't stop praising can't stop praising won't stop praising can't stop praising won't stop praising do your dance do your dance last chance to God be the glory to God be the glory God be the glory God be the glory for all the things he's done for all the things he's done for all the things he's turning to my children for all the things he's done for all the things last time he's done for all the things he had done oh, oh, oh. the goodness of the Lord ain't no wrong with praising the Lord you ought to rock your body shake your body praise the Lord Make your body praise him. Hallelujah. Well, go ahead and take your seats. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, keeping me from danger, seen and unseen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to say thank you, Lord. If you know that God's been good, if you know the Lord's been good, haven't he made a way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squeeze it a little bit for you. I said, thank you, Jesus. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. I said, I know the Lord's going to make a way somehow. Anybody believe that? I know the Lord. Won't he make a way? Yeah. Oh, yes, he will. I got a witness back there. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, oh yeah. He will. Yes, he will. He'll make a way, yeah. He, he comes in right on time. Yes, Just when you need him most. He He'll be there with you he to the end, yeah. I know the Lord. nothing you ain't never been like this oh when I was sick and I couldn't get away he touched my body and now I can tell yeah I know the Lord won't he make a way yeah I better stop while I'm ahead. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Just ask Mary. Just ask Joshua. Just ask Moses. Yes, he will. Ask Elijah. Yes, he will. I know he will. Yeah. Make a way. 
somehow. I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all a tough crowd, I'm going to tell you. A tough crowd. If the preacher had to get up and sing five more songs, I ain't done my job. Come on, lift your hands all over this place. It's one thing to sing and jump, but you got to know why you're singing and why you're jumping. You can get religious. Anybody can be emotional without being spiritual. But you can't really be spiritual without being emotional. If it touches your spirit, it has to touch your heart. And if Jesus is the center of your joy, it don't take a whole lot. All somebody do is mention his name. What? Who's talking? Who's talking about my beloved? Who? Who? Where? Who's talking about my Jesus? Hallelujah. Anybody here love the Lord Jesus tonight? It's all about him. It's not about me. It's not about anybody. I'm just cheerleading. That's all. That's all. It's all about Jesus. We did not come here to seek a man tonight. We came to seek his touch. Get your eyes on Jesus. If you get your eyes on Jesus, he'll flow through his servant tonight. And he'll bring forth treasures both old and new. We're praying for the man of God tonight. Stretch your hands toward the servant of God tonight. He was under a burden today, this night, in prayer. The Lord has spoken to him. And we want him to be able to release every bit of it. We don't want him to, listen, let the next church pray their own thing in. We want him to release everything that God has assigned for him to release to this church. If anybody wants all that God has for you, just lift your hands up. I want all of it, Lord. Tell him tonight, Lord, I won't stand in your way. I won't stop you. I won't hinder you. Lord, if there's anything I don't understand, give me grace. Help me. Lord, have your way. Do it for me, Jesus. Tell him, do it for me. Like the blind man that called out to you. Do it for me, Jesus. My miracle, my breakthrough. And I'll tell everybody. I'll tell everybody. In the, in the supermarket, at the gas station, I'll tell them what you've done for me. What great things the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. <clears throat> Last night we had a great time in the Lord. Tonight I believe we're going to go one more round higher. You know, they got so many things they're talking about in the news. You got to sometimes turn it off. When they talk about China has bought up over 400,000 acres of American land and erected towers near our military bases in our country. Now, how stupid are we to let them do that? They're talking about how they've been able to tap into the power grid and release a virus and certain cities around this country have received power outages. And they tell the intel, the FBI is saying, it's not what I'm saying, that if they're waiting for the right moment for us to be weakened, to release this problem and you could have major power out of just disrupting everything in this country now that Iran has struck Israel and now Israel has struck Iran Israel struck their nuclear power plants and blew them they were weeks away from getting the uranium to have a nuclear weapon we can't let Iran have a nuclear weapon because they already said death to America they blew up all their nuclear bases just this week, and now it makes our president look foolish because he asked them not to strike. And it shows the whole world that Biden, that they're not listening to him anymore. And now our country's in trouble because if war breaks out, it's going to cause a problem with gas. And you see, Biden has already been tapping into the gas reserves. That's why they've been staying as cheap as they've been staying. But you could have gas double and triple if we start going into a conflict. Can you imagine what that's like? If you don't see a need to pray, you don't have blood in your veins. If you don't see that America needs to repent, just go about your way and keep your head stuck in the ground and make all your plans and don't heed the call of prayer in this country. I can't tell you how many intercessors and people that I know. Now, everybody can't pray. Some people are doing good to bless their food. They don't know how to pray. 
They don't know how to get on their face before God and repent and break their hearts and soul. They don't know how to do that. That's the kind of stuff God. See, the Bible said when Jesus in the days of his life upon the earth, with great cries and with great tears, he pled with God. You think you're better than Jesus? You're not better than Jesus. The man of God knows about his calling soul travail. I can't tell you how many people around the country, people that I know that are people, they don't just have the name intercessor and, and go to conferences on intercession. These are folk that pray. You don't know nothing about them. How their nights are broken with rest, how they cannot sleep. And it ain't a demon, it ain't a devil. They just can't sleep. They're compelled to get up and walk to four and pray in the Holy Ghost. It's like never before. And they don't even know each other. All across the country, something is happening in this country. Will the church be caught off guard again? God has allowed things to happen in this country to show you that your leaders don't know what they're talking about. To show you that some of your prophets don't know what they're talking about. God has allowed a shifting to come to America. And we are right now at the doorstep of what are we going to do? What is the church going? As goes the church, so goes the world. God only sees two kind of people on this planet. He don't see black people and white people. And, and, and he don't see that. He sees new creation and sinners. That's all he sees. You know, black church and no white church. Amen. We don't put up with that foolishness around here. I love everybody. There's no good kind of people in every race. And there's beautiful people in every race. I want God's people. Hallelujah. America, we are at a crossroad. I think the man of God will confirm what I'm saying. It's time to pray. It's time to pray in the Holy Ghost. It's time to seek the Lord. There are powers at work that want to see this country be destroyed because America is the only way standing in front of a new world order that is anti-Christian and anti-church. Other countries have already fallen and they refuse to report it to you. Because they know it will alarm the people. But I just believe. That's just me. I'm a believer. God has promised. God has spoken to so many people. He told William J. Seymour. He told John G. Lake, the fathers of it. He told Smith Wigglesworth. He told these great men that he was going to pour out his spirit upon America again. That would shake it again. It ain't in the Bible. But I believe his prophets. He can't be telling everybody the same thing and it's wrong. I'm believing for an outpouring of his spirit. The kind where your three-year-olds and four-year-olds are speaking in tongues and having dreams. I'm talking about the kind where there's miracle services breaking out in the parking lots of supermarkets and powers flowing down the aisleway. Hallelujah. Gas stations becoming the saving stations. Every saint of God's living room becoming a Holy Ghost filling station and a prayer room for healing. Church, it's time for you to wake up and take up the mantle that God has called you to and begin to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Are you listening? It's time for you, the believer, to begin to invite people in your home and get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Stop turning Jehovah's Witnesses away. Learn the scripture so you can defend it and invite them in and ambush them in the Holy Ghost. Are you listening? It's time for you, if you have a business, to turn your business into a trap to catch sinners. And God will partner with your business, and it will never fail. We put this two-day conference as our 17th year anniversary, and God has been good to us. We are not impressed with ourselves in the least bit. We keep on looking to Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. We declare this church Holy Ghost Headquarters. Revival Center, we are the church they warn you about. We them wild Pentecostals. We run and dance and roll on the floor, and service might go past what you think it's supposed to go. But if you got something better than being filled with the Holy Ghost, you're welcome to go. We will not apologize that we're going hard. Our theme is Pentecost at all costs. Do I have any witnesses in here? Pentecost at all costs. We're going all out. We are the drunken generation. 
drunken in the power of the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all need to get so drunk that you start prophesying. You, in your right mind, you're too scared. But if you get drunk enough, come on, it'll come out of you. This ain't a put on. This is a come on. It'll come on you. Won't it come? I didn't know both shot. Hallelujah. We are that generation. So much revival needs to happen in the nations of the world. I don't believe Jesus is coming back right away. It's too much work to be done. I was in Thailand a few weeks ago. Less than 2% of the population is Christian. Millions lost. Portugal, Brazil, Germany. Small one-digit percentage of people that are really Christians. Spain, no revival. And we're trying to go to heaven, trying to get out of here. Trying to go, let's, let's get out of here. Get your boots on. Put your pack on your back and unpack your suitcases. And it's time to pray. The Bible says, and whom Jesus, whom the heavens must contain. He must hold him in until the precious harvest of the fruit of the earth. If the reason Jesus ain't came back is because the quota hasn't been met. Am I right about it, man of God? So let's not make this meeting ordinary. Let's release the man of God to say Thus saith the Lord. I'm just going to take a week. I'm just going to take a logical leap that you all came because you heard it was a prophet in the house. You didn't come here expecting Jimmy Swagger or 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 or, uh, or, or what's the other guy, Billy Graham. You came here because you heard it was a prophetic meeting coming on. You heard about healing and miracles. So, am I in the right crowd? Okay. So let's take off the hindrances and remove all. Let's get open-minded. Let the man of God flow and be free. Will you do it? Amen. Rule number one, stop asking God to give you a word. Stop doing it. That only stops you from getting one unless it's really a mandate from heaven that you have one. But the quickest way for God to give you a word is start praying for God to speak to those who he wants to speak to. And release the man of God from you just pulling on you. No, Lord, speak to somebody. Somebody needs a word more than I do. Jesus, speak to that person. Lord, touch them. Lord, you don't care. You just want to be involved in whatever God is doing. And whatever you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. To present to you that know him and introduce to some of you that don't know him. Amen. Prophet Tracy Cook has been preaching for over 30-something years, traveling the globe, preaching all over. I said, preacher, will you just take me some time? He's going all over the place. Fresh out of revival, and leaving, going to another meeting when he leave here. We thank God for him and his humility and simplicity. He did not come here saying, I got to have this and you got to do this. He just said, where? What time? I almost wanted to wonder if he was coming. Is he still coming? <laughs> he showed up like a stranger in the city. He just appeared. <laughs> we thank God for him and for his sincerity and the way that God uses him. And so we're going to receive him right now. Congregation, you can stand if you want. You can clap and receive and honor the man of God as he comes and we release him fully to obey the Lord and do God's will. Obey the Holy Ghost. Come on and give Jesus a great big clap off and a praise. Somebody shout yes. Are you happy tonight? Come on. Shout with me. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can be what God says I can be. Look at somebody next to you said everything is going to be all right. Shout everything is going to be all right. He's a talking God with a talking book. You know, this... I've been a lot of places, and it's so good to be able to be flowing free, y'all. Turn around and hug somebody. Say, I just love you in the Lord. Say, I love you in the Lord. You're not going to get the virus. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, I love you so much. Do you love them much as I love them? Y'all going to go all the way back to Koji first, and then we'll come to the 21st century. All right, lift your hands. 
I'm going to stay under the blood. I'm going to stay under the blood. I'm going to stay under So this old world can do, do me no, no harm. Sing it with me now. I'm going to stay under the blood. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm gonna stay under the blood. I'm gonna stay under the blood. So this old world can do. Do me no harm. You know how the old saints used to do it. Why don't you stay under? Come on, let me hear you sing it. All around the world, on all our major networks. Why don't you stay? Under the blood, so the world can do. How many sopranos we got here? Altos. When everybody toes, come on, join together. I'm going to stay under. Look at somebody say, I'm going to stay. Now, come on, y'all sing like Mahela Jackson. Come on. I'm going to stay under the blood. So this old world can do no harm. Now, I need y'all to take me all the way back a little bit deeper. I'm going to stay. Under the blood. How many ready to see the blood prevail? How many ready for the blood to prevail in your life? I'm gonna stay under the blood. So this old, old, old world can do, do me. No. Why don't you help me one more time? It would be injustice if we stop. Why don't you stop? Lift your hands if you need the blood. Why don't you stay? Why don't you stay under the blood? Oh yes. So this whole world. So this whole world can do no harm. Now we're gonna sing one of the Shambok songs. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Well, Lord, I'm striving, make a hundred, just won't do. How many 
striving for a hundred. We're not there yet, baby, but we're going to get there. Lord, I'm striving. Close to 99. say you got to keep on keep it on you can't stop look at somebody say can't stop won't stop do it again lord Somebody say it just won't do. It just won't do. Lord, I'm striving. Now listen. One reason I don't want to go to hell. They're not going to have Gatorade there. And another reason is I've done been twice. And I'm here to tell you that heaven is beautiful. We're going to gain heaven and shun hell. Look at somebody say, well, Lord, I'm striving. To make a hundred. Come on, Mahalik. Come on, give God a great big clap off and a praise if you love him much as I love him. Love is the motive. Take your seats. And we're not done singing, so y'all. I know y'all heard me, Hella Johnson. Never heard of Mahela Johnson, all right. My spiritual father, 1.30 in the morning, I'm going through a great battle. Nobody's ever been through a great battle here, so let me tell you about mine. He, he took Mahela Johnson to the Prince of Bow on Sackcloth. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? 1.30 in the morning, he sends me this song. He said, the Lord, show me what you're going through, and this is what he said. What a healing, Jesus, I found in you. What a healing, Jesus, you're 
restore, refresh, and renew. You're my healing, Jesus, for such a time as this. All rise on healing wings, son of rain. He imparted the sight clock to me over 30 years ago. He said, that mantle had lifted on me, but it's going to you. King's presidents admonish him as American sackcloth prophet when he was, God spoke to him to impart it to me. I stood on the mountain of vision and sackcloth with me out of American flag. You might have seen me wear it in some of their services. And the Lord said, I want you to speak to Israel, the church, and the world. I mean, it knows that God's getting ready. See, we're not going to expect our neighboring countries to turn their back on us. 1994, I said, water become precious as gold. It will be more precious than gold. We haven't seen anything yet. We're on the verge of the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God we have ever seen. In the history of the church, every dispensation is different. Y'all ready for the word tonight? Now, your pastor here, he loves to make sure you eat. And I felt I didn't get up this morning. I've been up all night, and I didn't hit the gym. I said, Lord, I feel like I hit your gym. Anybody feel like you got to work you out? I told everybody in my tent revival, don't you worry about going to Planet Fitness Time God done with you, then tent revival, you have all the workout you need. The inspector, I was building the church, and the inspector said, how long are you going to have, Reverend? He said, Reverend, how long are you going to have your tent up? I said, till the church is built. He said, how long is it? I said, till the church is built. He said, you know you can't go past a certain time. I said, I know that, but until it's built. He said, Reverend, I'm, I'm tired of taking heat for you. I said, well, just take some more. God's not done. Let somebody say, God's not done. Let somebody say, God's not done until he does what he says. Let somebody say, Lord, as much when it's coming in by the presence of God. Let somebody say, smell me, baby. I got oil on me. I woke up this morning eating witches for breakfast. Somebody say hallelujah. Literally somebody say smell me baby I got oil on me. I know from whence I came. And I know where I'm headed. I has not seen neither has it entered to the heart of man. That that God shall do for you and I. Literally somebody say smell me baby I got oil on me. Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16. Oh, it's been a great delight. Thank God for this man of God. Thank God for his ministry. I've been around a lot of apostolic houses, but very few have the heart of a servant. You know, the Bible says, whatever you set under you become like. Oh, God, we don't go too far, that, do we? Jesus. Somebody say Hallelujah. Somebody said, whatever you sit under, you become like. Look at somebody say, tonight is your night. You're not all the prophetic dreams God gives me. Your 20 years of your lifespan is going to be in prophetic dreams. You realize that? Scientific document. God began to deal with me about the healing ministry. So he gave me a vision of the foot. Underneath the foot, they have every area of your body. Everything about your foot links to arteries to your body. Scientific proof. I took it to the doctors, scientists. Every part of it has got to do something, whether it's arthritis, cancer, diabetes, always linked. Because the Bible says you shall put your foot on the devil's neck. And I drew it up, and I began to place each part of the muscle of the foot 
in the description of the vision. And the doctors were astounded. They said, how do you know this? I said, because God gave this to me in a dream. And ever since then, God has allowed me to be able to see the needs of God's people through the words of knowledge. Somebody said, God is going to do it again. God has a recipe for breakthroughs. And it's been a delight to be here the 17th anniversary. Let's give God a great big clap off from the praise. I had all my friends calling me. Said, what's going to happen? Chris Ree, all of them. All of them called me. Said, we want to know what's going to happen. I said, I know what's going to happen. They said, well, you tell us what's going to happen. I said, God's going to do what he says. Somebody say hallelujah. What is God going to do? I say, God's going to do what he's going to do. No, what God's going to do? I say, he's going to do what he says. Somebody say, God's going to do what he says. The most unlikely country you ever think is going to be the greatest attack on America is going to be Japan. First Samuel, and I had planned to minister it to you tonight, Israel, America, and the church, but I'm going to go here tonight. Is that all right? I was going to give you the seven points to the end time move of God where the angel Lord came to visit me, pull out gold and vial of oil all over the altar and said, I'm repairing the, 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 the Vedic house because there's been a perversion Tamar. You know who Tamar is in the Bible? He loved her, but yet he raped her. Hmm. I did a message call one time to... I put him in a coffin under my tent. I, I carried a coffin with my friend. He was about as crazy as I was. I didn't think anybody could be crazy as I could, but then I found one in South Carolina that was crazy as I was. So we ordered a coffin and walked to downtown Raleigh. That's a few other guys. We got in the news. It was a great advertisement. And then when they showed up the tent revival, it was on the stage, and when you looked in, it was a mirror. You could see yourself. God was a killer. Somebody said, hallelujah. Somebody said, glory to God. We need those days to come back to America, don't we? Somebody said, be bold as a lion, but humble as a dog. First Samuel chapter 16. We're going to go over seven scriptures. I feel the anointing of miracles. I'm crying out all night, burden all night for the state. I said, God, do it again. Uh, I just want you to do it again, Lord. He says, son of man, you're on assignment. And I saw a basket full of fruits. And they were getting ready to burst over 12 different baskets of fruits. And God said, I'm, on, I'm bringing the multiplicity of blessings from this house. Somebody said, hallelujah. This house won't be big enough to contain the harvest that's coming. Come on. Come on. I'm prophesying to somebody. I said, I've been all night. See, I used to dance when I was in the world. Then get up really in the morning, go to the meat department, and then do revivals and then party all night. I didn't stop dancing. I just switched partners. Huh? Some of you dance better for the devil than you did for Jesus. Huh? Huh? Come on. Some of you lost. See, one thing about skateboarding, I learned so much about skateboarding. We had all things in common. We didn't care who was the best. We knew if you made it, you made it. You didn't, you didn't. But we helped one another make it. You pull one another all the way through to professional surfing and all that, you know. I swam with sharks back then. I got hit by a great white. Yeah, it was God's. Grandmama praying, but I'm still swimming with great whites. Y'all get that later. It's free in the message. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 16. I was off the waters of Australia. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? See, and I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Now, it doesn't say biting. I'm, I'm sorry. Huh? 
I've already been threatened, and you know, it don't really matter. I've had guns pull out my side and everything else. I said, don't threaten me with heaven. You can't kill somebody that's ready to go. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Man, what you going to do with somebody that's ready to go? And for you, they kept me around. Somebody say hallelujah. He's getting ready to do it again. Shout. He's getting ready to do it again. Can't stop. Won't stop. Do it again, Lord. Throw your hands up and give God a crazy praise. And the Lord said unto Samuel, you know who Samuel is, that prophetic judge in the earth that God looked over his word and not one fell to the earth to accomplish the destiny and purpose of God. How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him for reign over Israel? Are you ready? This is my time. Can I use this? This is mine, okay? Y'all ready? You sure? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite out of the house of ben for I have provided me a king among his sons. Look at somebody say, I'm a replacement for sworn disobedience. Who am I prophesying to? God's about to replace them for you. He's getting ready to bring you to the forefront. You've been waiting, anticipating for God to use you, and you told God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. God sent this crazy prophet down to Detroit, Michigan, from the Carolinas to tell you, you are a replacement for somebody disobedience. Throw your hands up and tell Father God, I want everything that God has for me. Look at somebody say, smell me, baby. I got oil on me. Woo! I've been anointed by the prophet's oil. I got their shoes on tonight. Somebody going to walk out with a miracle. Somebody going to walk out with a life changing a spirit. Somebody going to walk out better than what you came in. Somebody this time tomorrow, good news is going to pick up on your end. And you're going to testify about the miracles of the almighty God. Throw your hands up and say, Lord, do it again. Mm. Feel. Thy horn with oar. Go. Apostolos, delegated one, authorized one, authority. Got all heaven's backing. You don't need nobody's backing. You got God's backing. Hmm? Now, don't misunderstand that statement. Be foolish and don't think you don't need leadership. That's not what I'm saying. God never called a novice to go to Africa. Or the novice go to Haiti. He wants you to learn and be developed. Three points to that apostolic ministry is discover you, develop you, then send you. Come on. I told you the other day that I had a young student, a prophet. He said, I've been called. He said, I got this prophecy to go to Ghana. I said, I've been to Ghana. I said, you know what you hit it to? He said, no, but the prophet I said, no doubt he said it, but the timing of that prophetic word. As you go now, you're going to be a missionary. You won't be a missionary. Four months in ministry, you know you're not ready. Huh? You need to be developed. See, we don't want to tell people that anymore. We don't want to tell people the truth anymore. You're not ready for the mandate, the mantle, and the mission on your life. You got to be responsible for the mantle that's on your shoulder. 
You got to be accountable for the anointing and the weight of glory, and you become that conduit unto God. You got to understand what you carry can bless people or destroy people's lives. That's why you need good Holy Ghost anointed preaching, prophesying and teacher, and leadership after God's own heart. I had this one lady come to my tent revival. She said, I've been to Old Roberts and I didn't get healed. I said, oh, my God. She said, I went to A. E. Allen's. She a little older. A. E. Allen's meeting. I didn't get healed. I went to Jack Cole Jr. to get healed. I said, you ain't getting healed in mine either. <laughs> what, I'm going to be the next one you say, I got the brother Tracy that ain't get healed? I said, you're not going to get healed by looking to man. God, then finish your faith. Faith is anatomy for breakthrough. Faith means forsaking all I trust God. When you trust God, you've got to trust him even when you can't trace him. You've got to believe him. Look at somebody say, I am a replacement for sowing disobedience. Hallelujah. I'm talking to you. Look, pull to yourself. I am a replacement for someone disobedience. God's not done yet. You see, God needs you. He needs you. He doesn't want you to have a whole lot of knowledge. He just wants to use you. Somebody say, Hallelujah. I know the Bible says, Holy Spirit said that my people destroy for lack of knowledge. They cast off the restraint and the revelation. I understand that. But what he's saying is, don't get so knowledgeable that you forget how to flow in the Spirit. Somebody say, The horn of all. Are y'all ready for that anointing to come on you tonight? The Lord of gladness, the joy of the Lord. Somebody say, I want you to anoint me tonight, Lord, to do your perfect will. Oh, I prophesy to somebody, your replacement for somebody's business that they didn't obey God. Favors on your life. I used to seek, when I began to seek the ministry, I said, Lord, I want this gift to flow, this gift. And I began to see the necessity of wisdom. See, favor to get you places that wealth can't. Hmm. Ever heard Bernice King? I told my prophet friend, I said, you're going right straight to Bernice King. This is the prophecy you're to give Bernice. And she just fell on knees, started crying. God has a way of just making sure he gets his word to you. Let somebody say, God, let your word come to me in light of all that I may go through. Somebody say, hallelujah, if you brought me to it, you can bring me through it. I will send thee to Jesse out of the house of ben thee. I've got me a king among his sons, that kingly anointing. I feel that kingly anointing tonight, that anointing of miracles where you put your feet down upon the lambs and everything beneath you begin to shake with the presence of the almighty God. And God brings you into favor where you can't do anything else but say it was you, God. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee. You know, the heifer is out of the tenses they sent. How no important the I say this by way inside and out. The red heifer is so important. Have to have the red heifer in order to build the third temple. Somebody say hallelujah. Have the ear to Israel. Lift your hands and say, Lord, do it again. Lift your hands and say, Lord, do it again for me in my house. Take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. There is no move of God without a sacrifice. That's a difference between a moment and a movement. Everybody can have a moment, but can you have a move of God that shapes the cities of America, go into the third world countries? Can you have a move of God that everybody has everything in common and you're not worrying about the big T's and the little eyes? You're weeping at the oars of God's infinite mercy and you realize it is God that brought you thus far. 
Let somebody say, God don't have no superheroes. He just wants your availability. Your availability. How I feel, God. His presence is here. Let somebody say, God is going to do it again. Number one, your replacement for someone disobedience. Shout with me. There's blessings and rejection. Let somebody say, there are blessings and rejection. I had a denomination say, uh, they were trying to cut my microphone at 12 o'clock, and I just started preaching at 11.59. And they say, you will never preach in one of our churches. So I met the, the bishop not too long ago. I said, Bishop, thank you. You closed the door to the pond. God opened the door to the ocean. Sometimes God has got to close the door in order for you to step through a bigger door. He's got to catapult that stone back so you can know that God is bigger than you and bigger than your money, bigger than your resources. I don't care who you are. God is bigger than anyone you've ever known in this earth. He's the almighty God with divine favor. Do for you what you can't do for yourself. They told me, you can't speak to this one in high places. I said, so why not? You can't talk to him like this. I said, do you think I really care? Man, I'm from the backwoods of Carolina with Little Town. You can't even find on your map. I've gone from homeless to be blessed. Don't tell me what I can't say. Huh? It's not to be offensive. It's the truth. My first car I bought for $300. You can look down the highway, and I was still evangelizing. I said, Lord, you got to do something. I'm telling these people about faith. I just dropped all my sponsors. You want me to tell them about faith? I said, Lord, have mercy. I need to get back with Hulk. Somebody said, hallelujah. And Lord said, I'll take that wooden slab and I'll make it a wooden roster around the world. Let somebody say, God, I'll do what he says. You've got to learn how to trust him even when you can't figure out his blueprint. Because God will torment you. And that's the thing that bothers the prophets when he becomes silent. I'm sending you out of the house to Bethlehem, out of the house of Jesse, out of the house of ben David. Samuel went and told the Lord... How can I go? And the Lord said, I'm going to give you a strategy. You're going to sacrifice unto me. And without a sacrifice, there is no great move of God. Someone's got to turn down their plates. Someone's got to cry at the altars. Someone's got to stop trying to look cute. And say, Lord, mess me up. Whatever you got to do, mess me up. I'm ready for your perfect will, not your remiss of will. Whatever you got to do, mess me up so I can stand in your perfect will. God's ready to mess some of you up. And you're saying, Lord, I hope he's not talking to me. You know them hairdos cost you a lot. My team was with me, and we do a lot of tents, revivals. I laid my hand on this one lady. She had stars in the hair. I mean, beautiful stars. I laid my hands. I was a young prophet back then. Thank God for ignorance has gone, and blessed wisdom has come. I laid my hands on her, and I said, in the name of Jesus, after the word, and I said, be healed. So when I lifted my hand, the whole hair came with me. I said, here, take it back. Double for your trouble. Somebody said hallelujah. True story. My team was just shaking their head. Sometimes they like travel with me. Other time they worry if I'm going to embarrass them. Somebody said hallelujah. I didn't know what to do. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? I said, here, take it, ma'am. Double for your trouble. 
And I receive it too. I was just thinking, you know, I married the hair. It had the stars and everything glittered. So I just laid hands. I said, take it. Came back and it was still in my hand. I said, Jesus. So I've learned a lot in over 30 some years. I can really have. Out of the house of Ben Devi comes the appointed one. Look at somebody say, I'm anointed for this hour. I'm anointed for this moment. I'm anointed. Now look to somebody and say, I'm sorry. He's talking about me. Don't be jealous. He's talking about me. I've been waiting just like you've been waiting. I appreciate your testimony, but I've got my own testimony. And, and I, I appreciate, I rejoice with yours. But God's about to do something for me I've never seen done in my life. Throw your hands up and shout hallelujah. I was with Kanye in the crusade. He was coming up the steps. I was going down. And I rubbed shoulders with him. I said, give him praise. He said, huh? I said, yeah, just give him praise, man. That's all I said to him. Before I knew it, the praises went out, Ben. I don't think you slept with the praises, though. Somebody say hallelujah. That's to pray for these people that in high places because it's pressure, man. Keeping up with the public, that is pressure. Got the mind I know. Look at somebody say hallelujah. Out of the house of Ben V comes what? A king. Number two, there is no great move of God without a sacrifice. If you're not willing to make a sacrifice, stop asking God to use you. Stop asking God to give you a ministry. Stop asking God to give you a business. Because you're going to have to labor no matter what you do. You're going to have to spend quality times doing it. Up at night, all night long, just to make the miracle manifest. Make the dream come to fruition. But if you want what God says you can have and you put the time and the hard work into it, God will manifest that word over your life. Somebody say, do it again, Lord. Somebody say, Lord, I love you. After Samuel said, God gave him an instructions. So without a sacrifice, there's what? No move of God. And God called Jesse to sacrifice and showed thee. And thou shalt do that thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And he sent the prophet of God down to Bethlehem by the name of Samuel. And the elders of the church trembling and said, Do you come in peace? One of the most feared prophets in the Old Testament, a major prophet. They said, do you come in peace? Are you come to disturb us again? And we need to ask God the same question. Let us disturb the city. Let us be transformers. Transforming somebody's life out of mediocrity into his greatness. We be the need transformers in the city. Transforming the nation with the power, the presence, and the voice of the almighty God. Throw your hands up and say, Lord, use me. To transform someone's life. I want to be that voice to articulate the plan of God. Oh, my God, I feel the oil. I feel the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Number one, your replacement for somebody disobedient. Thank God you answered the call. God put you where exactly where he has you ordained you to be. Can you touch those? You know, I've learned there five classes of people, and I'm not going to go to all the classification of people. But each one of those classifications of people is ordained for you to be in one of those class. God will put you right where you were rejected. He'll put you right in the place where you were ostracized. He'll put you right in the place where you sat and served and now you own the table. Somebody say hallelujah. Do it again, Lord. I feel the anointed of miracles. The anointed of breakthroughs. My spiritual son from Ohio prophesied. He came to one of them, came to one of the service in Ohio. Over a $2 million building, man. 
Two point what? Two point something? Two point five million. Don't tell me what God can't do. Tell me what he can do. Huh? Well, somebody get me get happy about the blessings of the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus is beautiful. And the devil's ugly. Somebody say hallelujah. I got that sense of humor from one of my spiritual fathers. I took him out to eat in Orlando. I said, whatever you want, sir, I'll get it for you. So we sat there, and 45 minutes later, he said, did God give you a word of knowledge? What, what was the waitress's name? I said, no, he didn't give it to me. Then finally she showed up with a cup of coffee and a cup of soup. He said, if, ma'am, if you don't mind, I can tell your elevator don't go all the way up, and you're missing a couple of people, pieces of furniture. So I adapted that sense of humor. I don't know if it's good or bad, but somebody said, what whatever you said down, you become like. Somebody said, glory to God. You better have joy, ladies and gentlemen, because what's come upon this earth, believe me, as God's American Cyclone prophet, you better be ready. Somebody, hallelujah. We haven't seen assassination of a president since JFK. Moses and Elijah stood before me in a dream, American flag over a coffin, said, you're going to sit in your day. Come on. We got to pray. Seek God. Cry unto him. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Number two, there's no move of God without a sacrifice. If you're not willing to make a sacrifice, you're just going to have moments and never a move of God. But if you're willing to sacrifice with all your being and with all your might, and let me tell you, that's going to bruise you. That's going to bruise you. But you got to be willing to make that sacrifice. Look at somebody say, are you willing to make that kind of sacrifice that demands who you are and challenges who you are? Are you willing to make that sacrifice and stand out among the crowd? Or you just love fitting into the crowd? Or you just love where you are? Are you content there? I'm sorry, I'm not content. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm striving to make that 100%. Brother Shambach song. 99 and a half just won't do. Somebody say keep on keeping on. Don't stop. And he said go down and sacrifice and I will show thee whom I am named to replace Saul's disobedience. Somebody say hallelujah. And all the elders said, do you come in peace? He said, yes. Now flip over to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Let me join the two books together for the next eight minutes. I can go on. I can really preach this for two hours, but we're going to start calling you out in prophecies and words of knowledge. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. Oh, my God, I feel the anointing of Jesus. And verses... 17, 1 Samuel 17. Number one, someone disobedience is what? Your replacement. Number two, there's no great move of God or any fulfillment of life and destiny. For the mantle has chosen you. You didn't choose it. And whatever God asks you to do, he specializes in moving you for it. But it takes a sacrifice on your part and mine. You got to give up time, your desires. If you delight yourself in the Lord, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. And every desire of my heart, God has given it to me. Thus far, outside of jumping out of a plane, he's gave it to me. Somebody said, hallelujah. I told my team, I said, Two things. I'm sorry, Mount Sion. I want to climb Mount Sion. So I told my team, get ready. We're going to get ready physically, mentally, spiritually, more emotionally. We're going to climb Mount Sion. Then number two, we're all going to jump out of a plane. I told me, you follow me, you're going to have a radical anointing. You ain't going to be dead around me. Somebody say hallelujah. Been in enough dead churches. Somebody say hallelujah. Jump out of a flight would do some of you good. 
Somebody say hallelujah. 35,000 feet in the air, 20,000 feet in the air, jumping out of it. Glory to God. Some of my team won't fly with me because they were given a prophecy in the house and they said, we can't fly with you because we don't know what's going to happen in an airplane with you. <laughs> Seriously, some of them won't fly with me. I said, God didn't give a spirit of fear. I said, and by the way, the prophet said, I'm going to live. I said, rest of you had to figure out what God said. Somebody said, hallelujah. I love my team. I, I love everybody that God has allowed me to be with. I cherish them with my heart. Somebody said, hallelujah. So number one, your replacement for what? Number two, without a what? Are you willing to adjust your schedules to God? Whatever you're willing to walk away from. William Branham walked into the room. Touched one of my mentors on the right shoulder and said, whatever you're will, will, willing to walk away from, you can have your miracle ministry. If you're willing to have what if God says, you've got to be willing to give up some folks. If you can get past people, you can get to God. I said, if you can get past people, you can get to God. See, some of you can't get your miracle and healing no matter what prophet comes. What healing evangelist? Because you're not willing to get past people's opinions about you. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I know y'all think Joe Osteen made that up, but the devil's a liar and his mother-in-law. Huh? Somebody say hallelujah. I'm serious. He didn't make it up. He just adapted and changed some words to it. Somebody say hallelujah. God's given us a mandate. We all don't have the same gift. The diversity of sound, but the same message. But your gift is just important to the person next beside you. He values who you are in the kingdom. He has anointed you for greatness. If you want to be used by God, all you got to do is to say, Lord, I want to be used by you. And then God's going to demand you to give up something for him to take control. Look at somebody say, hallelujah. Thank you for cutting the air conditioning on. I, thought, uh, I said, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I was in burlap, 110 degrees, sackcloth, miles from row in the radio station. I'm in the radio station with him, and I'm thinking, man, I'm, God told me to wear burlap to the radio station, prophesied to the president. They'd had heart conditions, so they locked me up. Not really locked me up. They put in a room for three hours at the embassy there and called the apostle who hosts me. He said, what have you done? I said, I didn't. I just revealed a terrorist attack that was coming. He said, oh, my God. I said, but if you can get me back to Carolina, it'd be great. Give me back to RDU. And after three hours, I was released. Look at somebody say Hallelujah. So you learn things over the years. Look at somebody say, God's going to take you and use you. Whatever field and capacity God puts you, be faithful to it. Look at somebody say, I'm assigned to someone that needs my presence, that needs me to show up. See, when you show up, what you have, they have need of. Look at somebody say, I'm at the right place. At the right time. It's that new, new wine. It won't make you lazy. It won't make you out crazy. But out of your belly shall come rivers of living water. Throw your hands up and give God a crazy praise. Shout hallelujah. That new, new wine. It won't make you lazy. It won't make you out crazy. Put you in the mind of Christ. Somebody say Hallelujah. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you like you, you're baffled. Somebody say, God's going to do it again. Verse 17. I promise I'm not going to minister, but so long. Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now forth thy brother, a ephod, a parched corn, and these ten loaves, and round to the camp to thy brethren. The next thing I want to talk about, God's going to take the foolish things to confine the minds of those that think they're wise, but he's going to use something foolish to bring prophecy to pass. Can you imagine a slice of pizza 
going to check out the battle and he left between Goliath, the armies of the Philistine, the army of Israel, and Saul, too fearful to go out among the voice of the giant. Goliath means to make naked, to strip your identity. The next thing is, why are you letting God rob, devil rob your identity? So many people got identity crisis. They don't know who they are. When you know who you are, you're not impressed. Huh? You're not impressed. When you know who you are. See, I know who I am. I wake up knowing it's the breath of God that put it in me. When I lay down, it's his breath. So I don't got time to be impressed. Because the moment I start impressing you, I stop impressing him. And I've already tasted of hell twice, and I, I don't want to make my permanent residence there. Somebody say hallelujah. People describe hell in so many ways, and so many make up books and everything else about it, but I really went. Somebody say hallelujah. It's like a body, and in the pit of it, was like a belly, and I was caught there in the outer walls, and the angel of the Lord stood there. And he said, Lord, give you an assignment to be a prophet to the nations. You have an assignment with two gifts specifically to bring witness to the power of God. And in that belly, I kept on seeing flames of hell where you could smell flesh. You could smell it. You could look with a weep and a gnashing of teeth, and nobody would find in peace and serenity. And in the dream, in this vision, whatever you want to call it, I couldn't weep because there's no weeping there. It was just gnashing of teeth. A memory of what you once had in the house of God, but you rejected it. A calling on your life, but you rejected it. A sign on your life, but you rejected it because you weren't about the opinions of people instead of what God says about you. You weren't about trying to please people instead of pleasing the almighty God Throw your hands up and say, Lord, I want to be obedient to your will. And I said to the angel, I said, why the belly? Why not the arms and legs? He said, because this is the worst part. These are the preachers. He said, these are the preachers. And this is where you're going to be. Answer the call of God. You can run as much as you try to run, but the calling is going to come to you. I don't care how hard it gets, get on your knees and cry it out to God. God give you a voice of singing, give you a voice of business. Whatever the case may be, just stay right there and tell the devil, I'm not bucking, I'm not moving, but I'm going to obey God. I'm going to obey his assignment. Look at somebody say, I'm going to obey God's assignment on my life. Lift your hands. It's worth the cost. You see, you want to know why I talk about Shambot so much? My 15 months old baby daughter, beautiful. She looked just like me. I told her mother, she's my twin. I said, she doesn't look like you. I knew she had a mother feature too. But I said, no, that's, that's my twin. And that little girl, I just seen the dead rays. I seen the blinded eyes open, come out of the wheelchair. She named the miracles. I've seen it. And she come to me six months. She said, daddy, I'm getting ready to leave you. I said, oh, no, you ain't. And I cried like a baby. I'm talking about somebody crying. That's why I told all of them, I'm going to give you a president, prime minister, who you are. I respect whatever God asks you to do, whatever office you're in. But my God, I done been through hell, man. Devil ain't got nothing else to throw at me. More questions than I do to answer. But y'all don't want to hear that kind of truth, do you? Huh? You want everybody to tell you every answer is going to be good, but that's not so. You want everybody to tell you what you don't want to hear, the truth. The truth is the anointing causes you everything. The anointing will cost you. Building churches up and down. I think I had twice to eat, eat at the table in my own home. I lived two minutes from the beach. I haven't seen my house in a while. Because it's such a demand. And I love God's people. Shambach told Jack Cole Jr., get him on the plane and tell him to get here. When I got there, he said, God knows something you don't. I said, but I want to quit. He said, what are you going to quit for, preacher? What are you going to quit? You can't quit. 
You're just now beginning. I said, we God better do something on the inside of me because I'm ready. And I tell you, God healed me. Come on. I very seldom tell this part of my life story. Very seldom. You go look it up. How do you want to look it up on there now? All the television networks, very seldom you hear me talk about my little girl. I'm not telling for sympathy. I don't operate in sympathy. I operate in compassion. But if you hear you ever lost a child, I don't sympathize with you. I have compassion with you. But one day we're going to meet our loved ones again. One day we're going to rejoice again. What is the summary of the story, prophet? Don't let anything or anyone stop you from being what God ordained for you to be. You may not understand somebody's trial and tribulation. You may not understand the anointing they carry on their life. But one thing I do know, God will never forsake you. God will never leave you. People want to know how you operate and give us a word of knowledge and anointing. Honey, it's cause. It causes. But I did it for God's people. Hallelujah. I'm going to come to a close because I feel the miracle worker. I felt the angel touching my shoulder. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. God will take something foolish your hand to bring prophecy to pass. Go down and take bread and some parched corn and go check on your brother. But see, the problem is this. Everybody is qualified on the outside is not qualified by God on the inside. God's not looking at the container, but he's looking at the contents of you. He's not looking at the what? The container of you. Brokenness in your home. Come on. Let somebody say celebration is coming. Celebration is coming. Don't be weary in well doing. But in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Throw your hands up and say hallelujah. Brother, Brother DePlan is sitting down one thirty in the morning eating breakfast. When he said, Tracy, people see us all over. He said, they see me and my brother all over TBN. All the major network. He said, but they don't know how poor we were. He said, our mother had a jar of molasses, and we had dirt floors in the home. The jar of molasses fell, and me and Mark were fighting all over it. Most people didn't know he had another brother named Mark DePlan. a good friend of mine that went on with the Lord. And... Uh, he said, we're so poor, but now they see us and they talk about us because of what God has done. You don't know what somebody's walked through to get where they got. So we need to be careful. Don't pull somebody down. Pull them up. Don't bring somebody down in your prayer. Bring them up to Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. So number one, you're a replacement for what? Someone disobedience. Number two, without sacrifice, there's no move of God. You can have your moment, but not a movement of God. Look to somebody and say, number three, identity crisis. You got to know who you are. And a prophet should never be a substitute for you to hear God yourself. I said a prophet should never be a substitute for you hearing God yourself. That's not the ministry of the prophet. We have governmental gifts. We move the climates. We shape the earth. We rattle hell. We turn nations upside down. The reason why God's people can't hear him, they're too busy. They're too preoccupied. But he said in the word, don't let my flight be in winter. It's a season that you're preoccupied with everything else. Instead of seeking God. A prophet comes to give you confirmation or affirmation. Confirm it or get, affirm it that it is yet to come. Speak it out in theorem to the noun, bringing forth the apostolic and prophetic anointing. So let him find everything in your life. The move of the prophet. We open our mouth and we just prophesy. We don't need people's permission. We just open our mouths. Jump in those shoes and start prophesying. Thus saith the Lord. I remember when I was in Raleigh, North Carolina. I said, this time tomorrow it's going to snow. It was 90-some degrees. I was in revival. They're saying, 24 hours going to snow? I said, yeah. I'm going to come back tomorrow night. We're going to be in service, midway to service, going to snow. 
Midway in the service starts snowing. Just a sign to the people. He'll do things for you you can't do for yourself. But God's ready for us to get out of Lodabar's pastures. He's ready. Get away from Lodabar. Get on your face. Come out of the valley of Becca. See, you got to understand that God was raising up a king with a kingly anointed, anointed with the horn of oil. And David had the assignment as a young boy to go against the greatest principality against Israel. And you and I have been ordained to go against the principalities. Pull down that strong man that's trying to dictate your home. Did take your money, did take your occupation, your ministry. It's time for us to face to face and confront the principalities of this world. Throw your hands up for 30 seconds, give God a praise. My little barosonte. My kitty kisika la la bosonte. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost to get ready to move. David shows up because he's got a prophecy. You ready for this? He has a secret. He shows up at the right time. He hears a giant by the name Goliath, nine foot nine inches. Only a few inches where he's unprotected. But David's skilled with the sling. He went in the brook and took time to pick out five smooth stones representing, you ready for this? The lots of the apostolic ministry. Identifying that each of one of them is for every opposition that may occur and that is to come. A prophet don't prophesy that now. We prophesy your tomorrow. Prophesy now the inferior unto your now. All of a sudden, David shows up and his brother said, is that not a cause? That's just like family, ain't it? Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all ain't got them at Thanksgiving? Okay. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm not done. Two more minutes. I want to prophesy to you. I was with my family at Thanksgiving. They were arguing over the turkey leg. I said, I don't care. Just give me the neck. I don't care. Life is too short to argue over something you can buy every day of your life. I'm not blessed because I can buy a steak. I'm blessed because I can die just one. I'm not blessed because I can buy one. I'm blessed because I can die just one. Come on, somebody. I know you're probably thinking, this prophet is crazy. You're right. Absolutely. C R A Z Z Z Y. David shows up, somebody said, the right place at the right time. Look at somebody next, you say, I'm at the right place at the right time. God set me up to bring me to the throne. See, God will bring you at the right time because that crown no longer fits Saul's head. And that crown had been adjusted apostolic prophetically for you to wear it. David shows up and hear the giant, the giant, by the name of Goliath, stripping people of their identity in having fear or injecting fear into them. And David hears, now this is not bad. This is the good part of the story. David hears what Saul said, you'll get a wife and all your family will be touched free. Now that's not a bad deal. I take down the giant, I get a wife and tax free. Don't have to pay no more taxes. Do y'all get that? See, when you take down the opposition, God gives you breakthrough. When you persevere through the opposition. See, some of you don't want a warfare. It doesn't happen microwave more. You got to warfare it through. The violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. And you have to have that attitude. I had a bulldog. Anybody ever had a bulldog? Yeah, bulldog. Yes. He, I don't know what's wrong with his face. He just slop all the time. But I went and I messed with him, put a bone up to him, and he started gnawing ground. I tried to take away that. They got that bulldog faith. The audacity. I'm not letting go till God does it. I'm not going to give up until God does it. I'm not going to stop believing God till he does it. I'm not going to give up praising him. I may not see it yet, but I'm going to keep praising him. I may not have got my healing yet, but I'm going to keep magnifying his name. 
I may not be where I want to be, but I'm not going to stop on the verge of my greatest breakthrough. Who am I prophesying to? You're about to get your greatest breakthrough, and the devil dish out. Oh, he can dish out, but you're a candidate for the great move of God. Throw your hands up and give him a praise. David shows up and hears the, the voice of the king. And then David said, don't fear. I'm going, your servant, we're going down there. He served Saul for 10 years. What happened when the mentors turn on you? That's another message by itself, sorry. What happens when your mentors turns on you? Saul 1,000, David 10,000. Jealousy comes into mentorship. Okay, that's another message from another Sunday. Somebody say hallelujah. David hears it, and he's got a secret. Because Samuel, knowing him in front of his brethren. And they ask, what are you doing here? And where have you left those few sheep? As though they would care anything about the sheep. But David had a secret in Psalm 23. The Lord, wait a second, my, my is an indication of a personal relationship. I appreciate your relationship with God, but I got one. David said, King, come here. Come here. You smell this. Smell me, baby. I got oil on me. Smell me, baby. I got oil on me. I've been through the bear season. I've been through the lion season. And the same God that delivered me from the bear season and the lion season. This uncircumcised Philistine is no match for the king of Israel. Throw your hands up and give God a crazy praise. Stand to your feet and lift your hands. Open your mouth and give God some praises right now. Look at somebody say, smell me, baby. I got a oil on me. He said, Saul, don't you fear. And Saul took off his garment. And David said, I can't go with these. I'm not earning them. Now, a lot of preachers would love that validation from a king. They will take that false promotion. But David said, I've not earned them. And by the way, whatever I set under, I become like, if I set under that garment, I operate in fear. But I've been in the house of Ben David. Somebody say, Hallelujah. And out of the house of Ben David comes a king after God's own heart. Look at somebody say, I am a replacement for someone's disobedience. And God's about to interrupt their plans. So I can take that position. Let somebody say, they didn't want to obey God. And I'll obey him. Oh, my God. Who am I prophesying to? You've been drawing out that job. You've been drawing out that business. You've been drawing that new home. And you've been waiting, anticipating for God to bring it to pass. You've been crying unto God from the innermost being of your soul and say, Lord, I want you to do it again. God sent me to tell you, smell me, baby. I got it all on me. Lift your hands and give God some praises right now. Come on, lift your hands and let's worship God. I give praises to your name all around the world. David had a secret. He had an encounter with the glory of God. See, we praise God for your testimony. But when you stand up and testify, it brings something inside of you that everything that went wrong, God began to make it right. Everything that failed and broke into your home, God is able to mend the broken pieces of your life. I made my mind up at the crisscross in America for over 300 some days a year. In the last three years, I said, Lord, I want to see that move of God again. I want to see it again. Come on, lift your hands and let's worship God. 
I feel the anointing of miracles. I feel the God of miracle breakthroughs. Come on, lift your hands and let's worship God. Let's worship. I feel the spirit of prophecy. If you need a miracle from God, that's why you're here. If you need to hear from heaven, that's why you're here. David showed up at the right place in time of his life. Because God said he's going to give it to his neighbor. And you're the neighbor that God's talking about. This is no time to be intimidated or be afraid. But it's time to be giant killers. It's time to rise to the occasion and seize the moment. And tell Father God, I'm ready, Lord. I may not understand everything you ordained for me to do. But if you just gave me by the hand. Take me by the hand and lead me. I will follow you. I give honor to your name. Lift your hands right now. I give honor to your Come on and worship name. him. That's how the prophetic flows. Oh Lord, honor to your name. You know the story. David round down there. Oh Look at that giant. And that giant tried to humiliate him. The moment you get ready to give your greatest, greatest breakthrough is when the devil try to humiliate you the most. He'll try to whisper through your ear gates. You can't be healed. You can't receive a miracle. You can't see God turn this around. But the devil's a liar. I got something to tell you. Hold on. That's an angel over you. I got something to tell you. God bless your grandbabies. We haven't talked. We haven't talked. You haven't said anything to me. I'm going to tell you, your grandbabies. Am I talking to you tonight? Hold on. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. That's a miracle. Just lift your hands. That's a miracle. Everything... In your life, it's a purpose and reason. And though you have carried the weight and seem as though that things have gone one direction, going a different direction, it seem a thing, some things should have worked out accordingly to this, but it was interrupted. I saw your heart fall to the ground and like shattered pieces of glass. And it seemed like the very thing that was supposed to be your greatest outcome of victory and your dual success. God said it brought you the pain and the hurt. When I talk about there are certain attacks that you go through, then you understand it. But God said, daughter, this is the time that I'm getting ready to go before you. My healing hands is around you. I'm shaping the course of your life, and that that I am had this shout through against you like the stones that shall be melted beneath your feet. But I, the Lord thy God, didn't bring you here. I brought you here to build your faith, not to disappoint you. I come to cancel out the plans of the enemy. I come to tell you that I'm going to take charge now. And I'm going to cause everything the enemy tried to do up against you to buck up against you. And I'm going to cause you to have that peace and that serenity again. The rest of this shall begin to leave you. I smell healing going through your body. I smell healing going through your body with your organs. I smell healing going through your bodies right now. I feel the miracle working of Jesus. Many have misunderstood the, the pressures that you had to carry. The way the lonely nights. And it seemed like nobody understood. In a room full of cheerfulness, it seemed like you're weeping like a child. But, Lord, I took notice of your tears, and I took notice of your heart, and I'll bring you forth speedily. For my hands shall begin to move now, saith the Lord. Watch me, I'm going to do a new thing from now to 12 months. I've raised thee up. I've called you to be a mother's hand. I've called you to prophesy. A pen of a ready writer, thinking not strange. In the last two years, why things have been begin to shift in your life. Why there seem like the tears are more than a pillow can handle. For I'm the rose of sharing your life, and I am the brain, the morning star. 
And I'm the Lord that God shall do for you what men cannot do. And he said, Lord, there's been a Jezebel spirit against you. Jealousy of me against your family. God said, I'm breaking that. I see you going up the elevation doors of God's majesty. God said, watch me. I'm going to do it for you. Healing him around your side, even down your spine. Healing, healing coming to you. I smell the divine healing power of God flowing through you now, daughter. God said his will. Lift your hands and help me sing. I give praises to your name. I give praises to your name. I keep getting a Denise. Anybody know a Denise? You know a Denise? You have a friend named Denise? Tell Denise that uh, what's owed to her is going to come back and there's uh, something to do with her court situation. God's going to move on her behalf. Okay, and Judge Hancock's going to be astonished. Come on, lift your hands and say hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and let's praise the Lord. Come on, lift your hands and help me worship the Lord. I give praise to your name. To Come on. Come on, we're going to worship him and then I'm going to call you out. They all is upon you. That's why the devil's afraid of you. Because of the all of God, you that's watching your homes, lift your hands and us worship God. I give praises to your name. Come on and worship Him and throne them with glory. He inhabits the praises of His children. Praises to your name. To your name. Come on, lift your hands. You're the David that's in your house. You've been picked on because you've been picked out. Come on, lift your hands. I give honor to your name. I give honor to your name. Come on and worship him and throne them with glory. Get your eyes off the man. Get your eyes off the one that's calling the altar call. Get your eyes on the Lord. Come on and worship Him and throne Him with glory. Oh Lord, for Your name is great and great. To be I give worship to Your name. Lift your hands and sing it now. We enthrone you with glory, Lord. We enthrone you with glory. We worship you, Father. We magnify your name. You're the God of the prefix ring. Whatever you need, lift your hands. The nail scar hands of God. For your name is great. And Come on, lift your hands and worship God. I give praises. I give praises to your name. Come on and worship God. I love you so much, Lord. You're the David that's in the house. Come on and worship God. I give honor to your name. I give honor to your name. Oh Lord. Honor to your name. Honor to your name. Oh Lord. For your 
one last time. I sing praises. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name. to be praised one last time and I sing praises to I sing praises to your name. just to make it personal just you and Jesus see David had a secret prophecy was over his life he was set in place for promotion and wear the crown of the disobedient king you're a replacement for somebody disobedience. For your name is great. And that sacrifice you've been making is going to reward you. You weep in tears, but you get ready. You sow it in tears, but you get ready to reap in joy. Coming out of Becca. Worship you. To your name. For Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way tonight, Holy Spirit. For your name. time for your name for your, for your name, name is great and greatly to be praised. give God a great big clap off and a praise take your seats for a moment I'm not done ministering we want to lift our hands right where you're seated and just worship God. Hallelujah. Come on, it's a universal language. It's a song that every language the world knows. Hallelujah. Everybody just lift your hands. Miracles are happening. Whatever gifts he wants to use, whatever he wants to say, come on. Miracles. Got something to tell you in a few minutes. Got something to say to you. Come on. Hallelujah. It's the highest of all praises, all the language, all the world. Come on and worship God right now. You need a miracle. The anointing is here. The spirit of prophecy is here. Whatever you have need of, that's what God is. Hallelujah. Come up here, sir, right here. Yes, come up here. Come on and worship him. Get your eyes off the man. Get your eyes on the Lord. Come. Hallelujah. Come on and worship God. God is a God who knows every one of you by heart. David went down and you know the story took the shield, the soil of the Goliath, and cut his head off. Raised up and said, look what my God has done. The king of glory, the God mighty strong in battle. God's touching right here in your heart. Right venom of your heart. Where it's going down from one generation to the nets. Right in your heart area. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. That's true? Yes. And because of this generational curse on your heart, it's left you even feel that times you're going to have a stroke in the heart attack. And there's a, a pain that shoots 
like a sharp needle edge pain that shoots through your leg and God is healing that as well. Yes. And there's a, huh? We haven't talked? I'm going to just touch you and God's going to give you a miracle. You ready? In the name of Jesus. Oh, I know I feel it. Come on, right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle, sir. Come on, lift your hands and worship God. Come on and worship God. Hallelujah. Whatever gift he wants to use, let him have his way. Come here, darling. Hallelujah. I want you to turn around just one time. Just one time. All the way around. Hallelujah. For I hear the spirit of prophecy say, this is the time that I'm causing you to exit out of one door and go to a greater door. And though you have seen the time of affliction, you lay upon that bed. And that has seemed to be your greatest affliction shall now to be your greatest testimony. And I'm going to cause those around you, even those inside of your home, to have need of thee. For I've seen you dance in praise and even cried even in the living room of your home. And I the Lord thy God said, He that hangs the star from his fingertips goes up the mountain with his hands and brings the breath of God as breathing newness unto you. For God gives you a different report this night. And God said, I'm canceling out the plans. There's been a generation of curses of cancer. From your mother's side, God said, I'm cursing it. It shall not come nigh your dwelling. That's a certain pain that keeps going in and out of your body. God said, it won't come nigh. If someone goes in this area right in here, it just Right in here. And it's just a constant pain the time it ease off and it comes back. That's right. Watch this. You ready? No more. Come on, lift your hands. God's going to build your faith up. Come here, darling. We haven't talked. I looked back there and saw your grandbabies. It's been a lot of attack against them kids, even in their breathing, their digestive system, even in the process of not being able to grasp as quick as, as, quick as they should be able to. But God said, when I anoint Deborah, I wish somebody would let the Holy Ghost have his way. Because I see somebody coming out of one and a five. A four. One, five, four. Eastburn. You ever been down to Eastburn? I don't even know where Eastburn is. Is there an Eastburn Street around here in Detroit? Anybody? I keep on. I'm walking on the map right now and I see an Eastburn. I see it. I see it. I don't know what it's got to do with you yet, but I see a map that says Eastburn. I didn't even understand it. But I see this map as clear as I'm looking at Deborah. And God said to tell you, He has chosen you. He's called you. And many times you felt as though you were not qualified to be the voice to speak of the other prolific, prophetic voices. But God said, when I laid hands on Deborah, I don't know what I see East Burn Detroit for. Something's getting ready to happen. I'm going to touch you right here, and God's going to take that pain away from you. It's right in your shoulder, Belay. Because Deborah, Michelle, that's a Michelle. An M. Who's that? That's your middle name. Marie. I keep seeing the M and trying to figure out. The, He's not showing me. He just said an M. And I'm looking because I'm still trying to figure out all that God is saying. And God said to tell you, I see this little, little sweetheart. It's a little grandbaby, grandsons.
God said he's getting ready to cause. Now, somebody you've been around the Puerto Rican area here. Just hold on. I'm mean, just taking me like you're a whirlwind here. Ponce, Puerto Rico. And God's going to do something. If somebody around the Puerto Rican area, and God said, watch what he does. You could be online. You could be here. But it's the same Ponce, P-O-N-C-E or something. Like that. It's like I see through the word of knowledge. But God said to touch Denver and tell her that she should call out one. God's giving you a special anointing to look past death to see life. I don't know your business, but God does. Somebody say hallelujah. You sure we haven't talked? No? Don't tell me about your grandbabies. Situation going through. Right here in your neck. God said, just touch her and watch. Everybody lift your hands. I feel my hands like thousands of votes. Come on, lift your hands. Stop fearing. Stop fearing. Stop fearing. Stand up. I want to see the Spirit of the Lord. I break the assignment of the enemy. I break the spirit of witchcraft against your mind. I come against it in the name of Jesus. And I command you heal. And that toy man is spirit to be broken down. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. I feel the anointing. That's why we got to worship him. The more you worship him, the more the gifts flow. That's the secret to it. Come on. Right in your lower abdomen area. It doesn't look like anything's wrong, but it's in your lower abdomen. God is healing you and giving you a miracle. Somebody say Hallelujah. Your knees are being healed. Just thank God. Put your hands right there. Your knees are being, your knees are being healed. And right around the L3, God is healing the area of your spine. Come on. Lift your hands. Right here on your, this side of your body all the way down. From here to your shoulder all the way down. There's a pain. God is moving that out of you, sir. Say hallelujah. Just shake my hand. You got to stand. You're going to live and not die, but declare the works of the Lord. Stand up. The doors are getting ready to open wide for you. They're getting ready to span your wildest imagination. And God has brought you. It doesn't look like anything wrong. And you work in, I guess, nursing. What, I don't know what you do. But God said to tell you that I see through prophecy where he's getting ready to take your life and shift you in a different direction. And God said, don't be afraid of this new change in your life. Because he's getting ready to cause you to elevate it to a different promotion. And what you were denied from, I see papers being shift on your behalf. What you apply for, what you're believing for, God said, I'm shifting that. From now to the 18 months, God said, watch me bring my word to pass over your life. And right in the, there's so much right in here, it's like cramping. A lot of cramping right in here. Right here. Just put your hands right there. Come here. Let me. Just, it's done in the name of Jesus. The miracles are happening right now. Jesus, do it, Lord. Come on and worship God. Go ahead and help Deborah. Come on, lift your hands and let's worship God. Come on, lift your hands and let's worship Him. Miracles are happening right now. Just lift your hands and worship God. 
Lord, I praise you. Come on, just lift your hands and thank you. I feel the anointing of miracles. Come on, just lift it. The prophetic river is flowing. Those nine gifts of the Spirit are in operation here. Dr. Jesus is here. The miracle worker is here. Don't miss your time of visitation. Just lift your hands and make what you say parallel to what he says. Stand up, darling. Yeah, stand up. Come on, let's lift your hands. You ready for your miracle? You ready for your healing? Absolutely. Wow, that's a sharp pain hitting my shoulder blades. Hold this. You ready? I'm going to do something. Ready? Lord, Lord, heal my shoulder blades. Heal my shoulder blades. Heal my shoulder blade, my L1. Heal my shoulder blades, my L1. Come on, just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Come on, just lift your hands. You can turn any way you want now. You can move any way you want. Stop fretting. It's already worked out. Before this time next year. It's already worked out. Especially around the month of November this year. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. I got something to tell you. We haven't talked. You haven't said nothing. Nobody has said anything. God said this is a peculiar, peculiar season, softly. And the spirit of prophecy is getting ready to cause a spiritual awakening for you, your family, like, like never before. And you stand at the threshold, and you stand at the shore. And God said, I'm going to stir you up to stir the nest of those around. I don't understand it, but I just see uh, far beyond the United States. And I see where God's getting ready to cause the doors to open up wider and broader. And God said to tell you, daughter... That God has chosen you for this particular time. And though it's been an unusual season and a change of what you adapted and used to. God said, my hands are shaping the course of your life as never before. For I put the keys into you. And it's like an Esther for such a time as this. You know, God will give us an asset that lets us know who we are. And God said to tell you. That he's causing you to understand the outset of your life. He's going to cause you to understand that the sacrifices that you made. Hold thy hand and do the lad no harm. And God said, watch me. The war of Ishmael and Isaac is over. And God said, watch me. That's a spiritual battle, a spiritual wars. And God said, the mandate on your life. And God said, you know, it's, it's just so unusual so many things I see in your life. But God said the peculiar season and places that he put you, he ordained it to be so. And many times, it would be so easy to compromise. But God said, this is your neat time for you. And God said, watch me. Because your eyes are going to be above. You can ever fan to imagine or think. God said, watch me. I see where God's saying to me to tell you. Like Abraham, you're willing to go that distance. You're willing to climb that mountain even though you don't understand. God, I could have went here and I could have done this. But God said, I put a call and a mandate on your life. I've chosen you from your mother's womb. Ministry has been all in your life. And by the month of October before this out, God said, I'm going to show you my favor. Around the 9th of October, God said, watch me. You're going to know from now to then like you've never known. You think you've seen miracles. You think you've seen breakthroughs and doors that you walked through. 
God said, watch me what I'm going to do. And I speak that as a blessing because I keep hearing I said, God said, I tell you that this is time of change. This is time of change. Prophesy, Esther. Prophesy, woman of God. And God said, as she prophesied, that has won storms in people's lives. Those that wouldn't understand, but they understand the language where God brought you from. Even in the small setting of a church. God said, I brought you from the small setting of the church to platforms of the world. In the name of Jesus, I speak the oil of God over your life. Come on, lift your hands and help me praise the Lord. How you feel, mama? Huh? I am blessed. Come on, lift your hands and say hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice. If you'll praise him, God will give you a miracle. If you'll praise him, he'll give you a healing. Come on and worship God right now. Yes, God. Come on and just worship God. I'm telling you, worship. Now stand to your feet and worship God. Hallelujah to the highest. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the miracle worker. Yokes have been destroyed. Deliverance is in the house. Come on, lift your hands and worship God. Come on, one more time. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of Jesus. Come on, let's worship God. I feel the anointing of miracles get ready to hit every one of us. As I labor all last night without sleep, God said, tell the river. It shall not be a river that shall stop because of a conference. No meetings, but it shall be a river that shall splash from this house to the streets of America and around the world. And everyone that joins in from fellowship to pastoral to just walking in shall be affected by the river. And this river will cause America when the face of the election turn, it'll be because of this river that switches it. Hear what I'm saying? My name and reputation is on the line. God said this river is mandated to bring a life change and experience to those in the gutters of sin. Those are still bound by drugs. Bound by perversion, homosexuality, lesbianism. God said this house is not big enough for what I'm about to do. The second phase will be land as far as I can see. Buildings will be erected after buildings. Millionaires giving like it's nothing. Moves of God continuously, even all night. God said, I'll make it like the house of David. I'll make it like the house of David. A house at 24 that will be busy for my kingdom. I'll make it a house after my own heart, saith the Lord. And ye that put your hands to the plow and do not look back, I will promote you in every direction of your life. I'll send you to those in high places. And ye that is called to do unusual strange work, Cast it not to the side, but obey my voice, saith the Lord. And ye that hearken unto my voice, there will be an unprecedented move of God. For I will gather you as a hen gather her brew. I will not despise you, but I will gather you unto me, saith the Lord. I will not chastise you without not my love coming towards you. My finger will massage your heart and remove your pain. I will move your brokenness. And I will come forth like rivers of life. For yea, I've seen your sacrifice. Even to the place where you say, God, whatever you ask, we will be obedient. Now you shall become a light. Now you shall become a torch. And it shall light up the state. 
and it shall light up America. Watch me, saith the Lord, before 45 days is out. Count the days and number them. For I will do many things among you that shall be astonished. Testimonies shall come. Miracles shall manifest. Not by the laying on the hands of a man, but my hands, saith the Lord. For I reach my hands unto you this night. And I embrace you with my loving and kindness. Reach your hands unto me, saith the Lord. And I have blessing for you that you have not yet behold. And I will cause divine favor. As my oil shall come upon thee, and it shall remain, it shall remain, and you shall know it's the oil of my presence, saith the Lord God. Come on, lift your hands and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. Wow, your son's name is Isaac. Wow. Bless you. Bless you. That's the father. Come up here. That's a husband. But yeah. Eternal union. Man, you're blessed. Highly favored. And one, I kept on seeing Isaac three times. He said, hey, I don't know. I just speak what he said. It takes more faith to speak it than it does to see it. That's for some of you ministers. It takes faith to, more faith to speak it than it does to see it. Just because you see it is not good enough. You got to speak it. And the more you consecrate, then the more you're getting, I'm ready to get back on the mountain myself. I'm going to lay hands on you. God said to tell you, son, you know, there are so many things you've gone through in your life that should have took you off of this earth. The enemy had assignment to take you out, but God kept his nail scarred hands wrapped around you. Even from an automobile accident, I saw the Twisting the metal and then breaking the windshield. But I heard somebody praying on your behalf. And I see a J. And it's almost like God's going to give you justice. And God said to tell you that justice is coming to you. And that that you had to endure, that that you were robbed from, that was taken from you wrongfully I'm going to water your hands again and God said to tell you that I've called you you know I don't really know I just see uh, when I looked at you when you I walked over and I said I know that's not Kanye <laughs> you know <laughs> but you know God has a sense of humor you know There's a Moore's family that God is touching. I don't understand that Moore's family could be here online. If somebody knows a Moore's family, a Moore's family breakthrough is coming. There's a James in somebody's household. You're getting a miracle. Come on, just praise the Lord. I lay my hands on you, and I report the anointing to, to go where you thought you went, but where you're going. There is a release of an apostolic work and grace. Favors in the city. Favors in the city. Favors in the city. God takes out the dagger now. He takes out that dagger. And I release you to those. I see music notes all around you. I see, I don't know. I don't know. I just see what I see like a pen. You write, write so much. It's like, I mean, you write all the time, man. But God said to tell you, watch. Your words are going to be affected in the earth. Your words are going to be affected in people's lives in the kingdom. God said from this day forth in the next three months, think, don't think it's strange. And don't be afraid. God said, my hands is upon you, saith the Lord. Watch the miracle happen. Get ready for it. That's a life change. The spirit is happening right now. Come on, lift your hands and let's worship God. I bless you. Come on, lift your hands right now. You know, very few people, when I pray over them, I can feel like a weeping. And when I pray to him, I can feel like a, a weeping. It's like you, you feel like a weeping heart. And many times God let us walk on the thorns of life. May not weep on the outside, but from the inside. 
okay? I've only said 5% of what I saw in the Word of Knowledge, so come on, lift your hands. Somebody say hallelujah. I feel the miracles. Every one of you got neck problems, just begin to move it right now. It's impossible to come to you. We'll be here all night. I don't mind being here all night. I still got to be in Michigan. So move your neck. Everybody that's having pain in your neck, just begin to move it. There's somebody here that you have major problems in your, can, in your kidneys area. And it's really intensifying. The kidneys are really, uh, the diabetes. And I can smell diabetes. I can smell kidney problem. If you'll just come to this aisle, I lay hands on you. God will show you he's still a miracle worker. And you're here. Come on, don't delay. Come on. Which one is it, Mama? From the diabetes, I have stage three. Okay. Okay, just tell them so they'll know that I don't know you, but through the word of knowledge. Say what you just told me. The doctor said that I have stage three kidney disease, and the diabetes is getting worse. It was getting worse. Jesus, I curse you, foul spirit. I curse it, the diabetes, you demon of diabetes. Kidney disease, go in the name of Jesus. And you that's watching your homes right now, curse it be the devil of diabetes. You foul odor, you foul spirit, come out of their kidneys. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands and worship God with me. Come on, lift your hands. Come on and worship God with me right now. Miracles are happening. You that's in your homes, lift your hands. The same God here in the river is bringing the river to your home. Whatever you need of, as I look through the lens of that camera, God's going to give you the breakthrough, the miracle. How long you had it? I've had diabetes for at least 15 years. 15 years? The w- 33 years old and I've had diabetes. The woman who issued blood had it for 12 years and God said the 13th year. You want to know what's so powerful about that story? She had five divorces. That would, that would stop her from being used in the church, wouldn't it? Five different divorces. The sixth one, Jesus said, through the word of knowledge, the one you with, and not your husband. She said, yes, Lord. But the seventh man showed up. The seventh man showed up and said, you're not going to be disappointed anymore. Five different personality came in the sixth relationship, so she couldn't trust it to marry. But the seventh man showed up and said, I'll make you whole. I'll do for you what you can't do for yourself. Throw your hands up and say, God, do it for her. Curse it be that demon of diabetes and kidneys. I command these kidneys to function and to flow. I command it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Prove that you are here. Prove that you send your servant. Hear me, Lord. Hear the prayers of that servant. In the name of Jesus. Give me a bottle of water. Do we have just a bottle of water that hadn't been opened, please? I want you to drink this water for the next three days. Don't drink it all in three. Just by the end of three days. No, no. Yep, here, you're fine. Just take a sip of it. Oh, you're all right. Here, it's all right. Here. I'm going to get you a miracle. Go ahead and take it. Because that's not the only problem you have. I know it. No, I know it. That's not the only major problem you have in your organ. Huh? Yes. That's all right, Mama. We're going to help you get your miracle. Make sure she gets that. Now, finish that water in three days. I mean, you're done today, tomorrow, at the end of that prophetic instruction. Curse it, beat every devil that has robbed her from health and divine healing. Give us a testimony, Lord. We curse the demon of cancer. We curse it out of her bones, out of her organs. In the name of Jesus Christ, we break that generational curse from her mother's side. From the third and fourth generation, we break it from a person named Teresa that passed down in your bloodline. We curse it in Jesus' name. Come on, let's praise the Lord.
Come on, just lift your hands. Come on, the Lord said, let them praise me, and I'll do miracles. Come on. Come on down, darling. Come on, that's all right. This is a faith clinic. The operation table. How long have you been having it? Six years. Well, Dr. Jesus is in the house. He'll give you a second opinion. Lord, I thank you for making her whole. Whisper, Jesus. I love you, Master. I love you, Lord. I curse this disease. I curse it, Lord. Dry up and strip and dang. Let your name be glorified through this great vessel. The valley that she walked through, the heartache that she endured, that testing that she had to endure that's coming to an end. Now, Lord, rearrange everything in her life that the, the enemy stole from her wrongfully, financially, her joy and her happiness. The peace of mind, I prophesy and thank. Dr. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, my to me. Come on. Now, follow with me, all right? We're going to do a different song, and then I'm pray over everybody, all right? When I say pray, I'm going to do a quarter. Follow me along for this one. This is, I've been through the storm and the rains, oh, but I made it. I've had some suffering and pain, oh, but I made it. I've been talked about, I've been lied on, but oh, I made it. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, I made it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've been through the storm and the rain. Oh, but I made it. I've had some lonely nights staying up and crying. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, oh, I made it. There were some days I didn't think I'd ever see sunlight. Oh, but I made it. Hallelujah. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Anybody know what we're talking about tonight? I've been through the storm and the rain. But all oh, I made it. I've been talked about. Anybody been talking about? Light on the Lord. I made it. Some nights I've had to cry. Some nights I've had to cry all night. But hallelujah. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Won't y'all sing it with me now? If you know what I'm talking about. Get your miracle right now. It's over, darling. It's over. I've been through the storm and the rains. But oh, let somebody say, but I made it. I've had some suffering and pains. But oh, I made it. Look to somebody say, I made it. You made it tonight to the river. You made it tonight. Tell the devil, I made it. Tell the devil, say, smell me, baby. I got oil on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I made it. Come on, lift your voice and sing. I've been through the storms and the rains. I've been through the storm and the rains. 
I'm going to count to three. Do you believe God's going to heal you? You believe that? You believe what God's telling me? You believe he can heal you that fast? I had pain around my kidneys when I lay hands on you. Sharp needle like pain shooting through my kidneys. Like somebody putting a needle through them. God curse it. Be the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be healed from this infirmity. I command to shrivel up and die. In Jesus' name. Let us somebody say, but oh, I made it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, everybody say they love you, didn't love you. Everybody you thought was your friend, you find out when promotion come, they love you. Success come, they love you. But those same ones, when you were going through a trial, you found yourself back at the, under the oak tree. I've been through the storms and the rain. Oh, but I made it. I've had some suffering and pains, but oh, I made it. I've been talked about, I've been lied on, but oh, I made it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now everybody needs a miracle. Lift your hands. We can't get to each and every one of you tonight. We know that God is putting out this river and there's so many. I don't mind. But I'm going to pray. And if you would believe God, God will give you miracles. All right? Right here in your throat. Right in your throat area, God is healing you. Right in this area. Tightness around your, 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 it's, it's your left side of your lungs. That's a spot in your lungs. And God's moving that from you right now. A spot in your lungs. That's why it's an irritation in your lung right here. God said, I'm moving that. And that left knee of yours is being healed. And it says fluid around your knee. It's being healed. You won't have a walker. You won't have, God said, you're going to be made whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, but I made it. Come on, lift your hands. Let's just thank the Lord. How many has made it? How many glad you made it? How many see got your right mind? Huh? Still got my right mind. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Somebody say, do it again, Lord. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Give God a great big clap off and a praise if you love him much as I love him. Smell me, baby. I got oil on me. If you're backslid and you don't know God, and this is your first time, I'm not listening to the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you give me the great honor and privilege to introduce you to the household of faith? You're backsliding. You're backsliding. You're not where you need to be. And that's the greatest miracle. That's that soul salvation. I can see Dr. G. I see somebody going to, back to Dr. Stevenson. Dr. Stevenson is going to be astonished. I see somebody coming out of the four. There's a 401 in your address. You're coming out. God's give you a miracle. There's a Tyree in somebody's family. They're going to get a miracle. There's somebody. That's a Johnson family. That God's going to give a miracle. Uh. Just on and on and on. Somebody say hallelujah. But the greatest miracle of all is when you're not born again. It's more than just coming to a church, a revival. You need to know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
Whatever gifts he chooses to use, he has free course. The Holy Spirit operate those gifts as he chooses, will, whatever need is the greatest. And that's how he's glorified. But if you don't know Jesus, give us the privilege and honor to pray with you and lead you to salvation. I'm taking everybody's born again. I'm taking everybody's saved. Hell is real. Hell is real. It's not a figment of your imagination. It's real. I don't know about you, but I, we sang a song way back in Koji. When I go on the last mile of the way. When I, when I go on, I don't need a bouquet of roses. Just one rose will do. One rose petal. Those rose petals that falls in God's garden. God's garden for you. Is the rose petals of life. And when those rose petals begin to fall in God's garden, he picks it up and he wipes those tears from it. He plucks out the thorns from your side. He begins to move on your behalf. And every prayer, every person that said, I hope he comes and prophesied to me tonight. I hope he comes speak to me. You haven't been left out. That's not the kind of God I serve. No, he doesn't need me. He can answer every one of your prayer instantly, instantaneously. Just the fact that I'm here, and I'm grateful. But he doesn't need me to answer your prayer. That wouldn't be a just God. If he just allows to call several people out and you need a miracle. No, that's not the kind of Christ I serve. So bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, everyone here that needs that kind of miracle that I did not come to address through prophecy or the gifts of the Spirit. You have burdened me without sleep. You spoke what you said. Demonstrated enough to build their faith. Spoke to us about David out of the house of Benedict, taking down the giants in our life. Robbing us of our identity. Move us from the crisis to carrying that cross again. Letting us know that the crown that's fitted upon our head is what you have ordained. Now, Lord, I think that every giant in their life has come tumbling down, been cut off. I think that they're the David in their house and every prayer has been heard. The song they sung has already been listened throughout the entire of the world. The prayer of their prayer has already been answered. I thank you for it, Father. And Lord, those that did not come forward to feel as though they should have, Lord, you just touch them right where they at and do them in their homes. Let the voice of this preacher speak unto their hearts. I bless them. I speak unto them. In Jesus' mighty name. And put your hands together for Jesus. Look at somebody say, God's bigger. He's almighty God. And the last thing that uh, instructed when they take up the offering tonight, that's at least 25 people that can sell a one-time love gift of $1,000 or more to help this billing project. You can do way more than that. And it's needed. Let's move this ministry forward together. Whatever I can do, come in and assist this man of God. Now, you that's part of the river, and you're a friend of this river, and you that have come for the very first, ten, first time, let God minister to you about the uncommon sea with uncommon favor. Have I seen it more times than I can count or give you testimonies about? Somebody's been healed right now in your left leg. You have pain right above your kneecap area and around your thigh area. If you're just beginning to praise the Lord, you'll be healed. Somebody has prominent in your left side of your jaw. God's going to give you a miracle teeth. Miracles in your left side of your jaw is like pain, like an essence, and God says it's going to heal you. Listen, yes, when they take up their offering tonight, they like, I think it's about 100000 to pay it off. That's not much if we all do our part. All right? You understand? No pressure, no pulling. He didn't tell me to do this, but that's the last thing the Lord spoke to me to do is to challenge you. All right? I'm going to turn over to the man of God. Bless you. Come on, lift your hands up. Did you enjoy the man of God tonight? I said, isn't the Lord good? A few things I want to point out. Some of you have probably never seen authentic prophetic ministry like this, but he's renowned all over the country as being God's servant and a tremendous prophetic acuity. Uh, when he called up Sister 
sister with the gray hair. Where's Sister Deborah? She's still here. And he didn't know her name. He never met her before. People want to talk about people having earphones and and there's a few carny crooks that get out here like the old carny games and work the crowd and talk to people before services and they did those things. But we don't bring in people like that. We don't bring in shysters and charleston hucksters and I don't I screen them. I know all the crooks. I've been around long enough that I know them. I don't not getting in here. We're going to let them in. You got to have real gifts and real authentic ministry to come here at this church. We will not have it polluted. We will not have it uh, desecrated by those who bring in warlocks and witchcraft people trying to manipulate. We don't believe in that sort of thing. <clears throat> Somebody said, well, you've had some people before. You don't know. I've tried to help people. I've tried to help some people. And, you know, you can't help everybody, can you? You know, the Lord told me a long time ago, he said, you can't help anybody. I said, well, Lord, I'm trying to help. He said, you can't help anybody. All you can do is help people help themselves. <clears throat> Nobody can pray for you like you. Because nobody knows what's in your heart like you. Nobody knows what you need to get rid of to move out of your way like you. Nobody can get on the altar and call out to God for you like you. And a lot of times God brings these meetings because he wants to challenge you to go back to your secret place. Sometimes the Lord didn't prophesy to me and I'm anointed and I know he would have said he would have noticed that about. He didn't say it to you because he wants to say it to you somewhere else. And God, God is funny like this. He'll make you jealous. You know, do you know the Lord will make you jealous? Did you know that? Not in a bad way, but a godly jealousy. He'll put somebody right in front of you, and he'll give them what you've been wanting to make you go back and get on your face. God is just letting you know, you know, I'm giving it to other people. <clears throat> Look what I'm doing over here. You sitting there, Lord. And he, the wrong attitude is, well, I'm just not going to come. I'm not going to do it. See, that just proved your heart wasn't right. That's why you got disqualified. You are going to have to humble yourself. You're dealing with a mighty king. There's no such thing as authority outside of him. No king, no president, no monarchy. They're nothing. God would walk in the room with all the rules of the world. They'd be like one-year-olds and two-year-olds, like nothing in front of him. They're nothing. He's the only majesty. He's the only true authority and power. In his presence, you better be humble. In his presence, you better not be talking about what you're going to do. You better say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. What are you not saying yes to? I had to say yes today to something. I didn't want to say yes to it. And I've said it in the past, but I said, Lord, I'm willing to go 40 days if you want us to go straight. I'm willing to go weeks and weeks every night. Do you know what kind of commitment for me to be in church every night? Do you know the wear and tear on you to get up and come to church and worship and back in church? That's a sacrifice. I don't, but you know what? It's so wonderful, though. It gets so great. It gets so glorious, but it's a death to the flesh. God needs people who are willing to press and stretch out. Are you willing to be stretched? If you're done learning and you think you know it all and you're not willing to be stretched, you're done already. <clears throat> if you're not going to be a worshiper, you're finished. Only worshipers progress. God don't need your worship. God don't need you to sit back and say, I love you, I love you, uh, did old 50. God doesn't need what, what does God need that for? You need worship. You the one that forgets he's a healer. You the one that forgets he makes a way. You the one that need to constantly be reminded he can do all things but fail. That's worship is for you. He don't need that. Because as you do it, it's a process that changes you. It changes you. It breaks your heart. It gets rid of that stubbornness and that hard will. I won't do that. And also you start saying, yes, Lord, I do it like you. He says, that's right. That's what God's been waiting on for you to get out of that hard heart and out of that hard spirit and just humble yourself. You know, if you just go ahead and break yourself down, he won't have to do it. I had somebody say, Lord, humble me. I said, stop. Don't, don't say that. What are you doing? Don't do that. Lord, I thought it was being deep. Lord, humble me. I want you to humble. I said, you don't know. Stop. Don't. Don't. Ever, don't you do it. Don't you ever ask God to humble you. Oh, my God. Am I right, apostle? You tell the Lord, I'll, I'll humble myself. I'll humble myself. What I got to do? Clean some toilets. What I need to do around here? I'm humble. I am. Somebody said, you think you're humble? I don't think I am. I know I'm humble. 
humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. These gifts come forth to stir up. Now, I want you to lift up your hands. I'm going to let you go in a minute. <clears throat> there is a movement in this room. You get sensitive to rhythms in the house. One thing I learned traveling and preaching, you got to learn rhythms in the service and to move and flow. You don't go in telling God what to do. You come in doing what God's doing. You get with the flow and get right in it. Amen. If he ain't doing nothing, go sit down. Right now, lift your hands up and close your eyes. You are nothing but little receivers. You are little radios receiving a broadcast from eternity. And in this room, there is a whirlwind. There's a prophetic unction. The mind of Christ is in this room. The same mind that he picked in and, cl and clicked into and began to speak people's names and begin to speak the secrets of the heart, that anointing is in the room right now. Right now, why does it come to the body of Christ? To stir up the prophetic spirit in you. Dreams and visions in the Holy Ghost. Answers. Wouldn't you like God to just answer something in a dream? And not these crazy dreams where you don't know what they mean. And you don't, No, it's just so clear. When you wake up and say, I know that was God. That's what you want. You want clarity, accuracy, discernment. To stop being fooled and tricked by people and tricked by the tricks of the enemy discerning spirit close your eyes raise your hands and say father in the name of jesus this anointing that's in this room right now let it be transferred say father in the name of jesus grant unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that the eyes of my understanding would be flooded with light that I might know the things that you've freely given to me in the name of Jesus. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my heart, Lord. Show me the blind areas. Show me where I keep missing it. Show me the blind areas for my loved ones. Lord, you said you show me things to come. Show me things to come. You said that your conversations in heaven you would tell me what is being spoken in the heavens over me. You said you would come and do it. Reach up and pull it down. Do it now. I need to hear your voice. I need to be directed by you. I need you to tell me what to do. Tell him I'm like a child lost in the crowd, like a dove in the storm. I need you to lead me, guide me. I need you to speak. I lay down what I want. I lay aside what I think. That's yours. I want your way. Come on, tell him like you. I want your way. I leave aside my wisdom, me. I won't lean to my wisdom. I won't lean to my understanding. I won't lean to my knowledge. It's you that I trust. Tell him it's you that I trust. Whatever's happening in America, whatever's happening in the world, whatever's happening in this nation, whatever's happening in the capital, I trusted you. I lean on you. I look to you. I look to you. Touch me now. Feel me now. Flood me now. I receive it. I receive it. I expect dreams. I expect visions. I expect prophecy. I expect the gifts of the Spirit. Tell him I expect revelation. Holy Spirit, sweet dove, come. Come. Come and speak to me. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus right now. Do you not know that all you need is a word from the Lord? All you need is Jesus to speak. All you need is the Holy Ghost to tell you one thing to do. That's it. That's it. Ask the Lord what you should give tonight. We're going to let you go and you be out of here in less than 10 minutes. Ask him, Lord, what shall I give? What shall I render for all that you've done? We don't believe in putting pressure on you. We don't do lines. I don't do that. I don't bring preachers here that do that. Amen. We don't do that. Ask the Lord, what, what shall I? The song says, what shall I render unto God? For all the sea. Oh, put it up on the screen, please. The giving. I render. But tell me what shall I 
The song says, God has everything, and everything belongs to Him. God has everything, and everything, and everything belongs to Him. Oh, God has everything. He has everything, and everything already belongs to Him. Everything belongs to Him. What shall I render? Shall I render? Lord, what shall I give to you? What shall I render? Wait a minute. Ashley? As you get your offering together, if you need to write out a check, write out to NWG. If you need an offering envelope, look in front of you. Before you go, Ashley, where are you going? Where are you taking off? Ooh, I'm going to step. Wait a minute. Don't go nowhere. I want you to stretch your hands in order and pray. You heard the word she got tonight? Stand up. Her and Justin, come here, Justin. He's one of my spiritual sons. Is that right? I've been knowing him since he was 16 years old. In great revivals, we met. Powerful service in Baltimore. And he, I remember when he met this young lady and they started dating. And I remember they got married. And she was already modeling. And then she went on to become a very, very big model. Super, she said supermodel, no pun intended. She's been on the cover of Sports Illustrated, Swimsuit Edition, Elle, Cosmo, every modeling magazine you can think of, she's been on the cover of it, and she hosted uh, America's Top Model, many shows of it, and some of y'all may not remember, but she's saved and got the Holy Ghost, and you don't know it. He's saved and got the Holy He's also a cinematographer. He does movies. One of his movies is on Netflix right now. Is that black enough for you? That's what it's called. The man of God didn't even know who they were. He had no idea what he prophesied to her. He didn't know who they were. He was bailed on them. He had no idea. Not only did Sister Depper, he got so many people right because I knew so many people in the situation that he was very accurate and right. I want you to stretch your hands for them because they're going through deep places. They're going through great places. They came here fasting and consecrating, believing God for a serve all week long. They said, Pastor, we prophesy. We, we're fasting all week long. So stretch it because they're going to go and meet people you ain't never going to meet. There's people that you think are full of the devil and you can't stand them and they right there, God sent them right there to talk to them. Did you hear what I just said? We're going to pray because, you know what? Have you heard of the wickedness going on in Hollywood and all the things? Aren't you glad you got, God's got secret agents in there. He's got people in there. Stretch your hands toward them and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. Lord, for your blessing and your favor. Lord, we ask you to surround them right now with divine protection, special a detachment of angels, Lord, to go before them and open up the way. We thank you for supernatural doors. And, Lord, the completion of the word of the Lord that was spoken over them. And, Father, we thank you right now that you're blessing them and you're rocketing them into arenas and spheres where they're so...